Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Valinus, David. I see you guys are uh, already in the chat. So I'm here with uh, Nico Serpico, and we're going to be talking about the media, which, as you know, is fully trustworthy, just like science, which is fully trustworthy. That's why we only have to just follow the science, and we have to trust the media, because the media would never be infiltrated by groups like the CIA and would never spread fake news, as as you know. So we're going to talk about this today. We're going to talk about, are there any Muslim influences? Is there bias towards Islam? And um, yeah, I've got Nicholas Serpico, or sorry, what, Nico Serpico on the channel today to discuss this. So welcome, Nico. And also, for those of you who are listening and watching, thank you for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, all of those YouTube things. You know, that's very important. It does help to grow the channel. I'm trying to get to 20,000 and uh, yeah, it'll help. And uh, also, I've got to say very important YouTube things, like remember to floss twice a day and brush your teeth, especially after meals, because because things like that really, it establishes credibility. But go for it, Nico. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, thanks for having me here, Lloyd. Um, yeah, like um, I'm elated that you've got me here. Um, on my channel, you probably, I don't know if you've seen any of my antics on my own channel, but uh, I definitely pushed the envelope. Uh, by design, it's a, take a completely different approach than you do. Yours is a more pure academic approach. Mine is trying to appeal to, well, pe victims of mass media, long story short. And so I use their mode of communication, which is just being belligerent and obnoxious to get their attention. <laughs> you know? um, so far, I'm not having a lot of success. I only have 150 subs, and I don't think any of them are my target audience. But you know, it's like the that. approach. I mean, yeah. all of us have to make adaptations, even myself, I think. Yeah. And you spoke of victims of media. I I used to believe a lot of things. I, I bought into a number of things that I was sold and told um, by both people who, who appear on the left and the right. And I would say that obviously on the left, you have far more propaganda since they're openly embracing socialism. But there was a time that I believed a lot of things. And once I started doing some actual reading history, I realized I was misled that I was had the wrong impression. I was laboring under, you know, false conceptions, and uh, that made me angry. So I started my channel as a way to speak out against all of the the, the falsehoods that I was discovering in, in media. Mm. That's exactly where I'm at. That's exactly where I'm at. And uh, in fact, I um, I was challenged around the turn of the century by another media buff, somebody I consider to be a, a bit of a mad genius. Um, but he, you know, he basically asked me a simple question about the cross and how that's portrayed in movies, or what's being presented at the time, or which character is being introduced at the time. And since the turn of the century, I, I started paying attention to that. A few years later, it became very evident that in Pavlovian fashion, uh, people were being conditioned to hate Christianity. And a few more years of that, it just, it was just basically. Every time I watched the movie, I was subjecting myself to being browbeat to death. Um, and then you yeah, have a bunch of other experiences. I mean, the 20 teens, the BLM, and all this other um, nonsense followed the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So here we are. But uh, around 2020, I tried to do um, like a doctoral level research on this um, empirical, quantitative, literally movies, choosing only the movies that were the most watched for the past mm -hmm. half century um, and basically gauging uh, whether they're presenting a short list of terms, Christian terms and Christian symbols in either a positive or negative light uh, through a Christian perspective. And I mean, my framework was, uh, was pretty, pretty tight, pretty solid, which is hard to say in any research project. And professors were, were amazed by by the framework, but I couldn't get it to take off. So that's why I ended up on YouTube instead. <laughs> you know, uh, the poor man's academia, I guess. Um, yeah. um, and so, yeah, uh, I've been dedicating this past couple of two, three years now to doing that. Part of that is Islam because there's a lot of Dawah. And that's what we'll be focusing on today. Hollywood. Right. Well, specifically Hollywood dollar yeah <laughs> yeah I think I mean I don't think it's controversial to say that that we have a lot of garbage the message the woke method 
coming out of Hollywood. Uh, I first felt there was a problem living in South Africa when I was a teenager. And you would see this one message being pushed in the, the media, in the movies and the TV shows. You can be anything you want to be in America. You can be anything. And I used to think, no, you can't. No, that that's that's a false message. You can't be anything. At some point, you 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 know that that that's just a fairy tale. You, there's, you have to be realistic about where you can go. Sure, you can you can improve your circumstances, but to be anything, well, now man can be a woman and a man can be a furry and he can be a. You can change genders three times a day and yeah, because you can be anything and I and then that's the logical conclusion of that message. Yeah, exactly. And I feel the same way about atheism and how that leads to the occult. I've been saying that for a long time. And everybody thought I was crazy for saying that. But now here we are. Everyone's being openly, uh, I don't know, pagan, I guess you can say. Well, atheism is, is really just a rebranded form of paganism. This is something that, that shouldn't surprise anyone. It's really just a return to Greek and Roman paganism of 2,500 or more years ago. Mm, the Renaissance. Yeah, I get it. Um, so speaking of Western influence, let me, let's get to that presentation because yeah, we started a bit late and I've got a lot of slides. Most of the slides I'm just going to be zipping through. Um, but I want to go ahead and basically look at these, uh, two, these, these are two monikers that i saw when I was volunteering in Greece with this historical mass migration. That was around 2015. Um, things were still flowing back then quite, I mean, heavily, hundreds, if not thousands per day were, were traveling just through Greece alone. I have a good friend who was, um, I don't want to say the name of the organization, but a prominent organization that was in charge of that. And he would literally establish a database for keeping track of those things. So it's just mind boggling um, what was being funded. So something that I saw in those experiences was no borders and shows solidarity, sprinkled it all over the place being put all over um, these NGOs, orgs on Facebook and so on. And I could see, well, where they were taking us. And, you know, it's kind of along the lines of, of what we just mentioned uh, with that whole um, uh, John Lennon song, uh, Imagine, which is really popular, one of my childhood favorites until I, yeah, until I grew up, I had, a, had a kind of a spiritual awakening on my own, which we we'll, might talk about. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of curious. What does the audience feel? Do they feel like Hollywood is what some Muslims complain about? Does Hollywood portray Muslims negatively with prejudice? In other words, falsely, do they slander Muslims? Or does Hollywood actually promote uh, Islamic ideas and ideologies and constructs? Or is just are they just there for the money? I mean, that's something that we hear in a lot of circles. Well, they're just doing it for the money, and the money dictates... Um, their next step? Are they neutral? Essentially? I don't think it's purely about the money. If you look at these woke movies that are flopping left and right, <clears throat> they were doing them because they had built up a war chest and they were doing it for the ideolog for ideological reasons, despite the fact that you've got very, very upset shareholders who are losing money hand over fist. So to a very large degree, it was purely done ideologically. And they didn't care about the, the losses of money. I couldn't agree more. Unfortunately, in a lot of the movie review things, they always re go to the whole discussion about follow the money, money trail. And that will, you know, but as you said, it's not, not the case. I would argue against that. Also, when it comes to losses, I mean, how much, how much of that is tax write off? Those people might argue about uh, advertising expenses. How much of that is that a tax write off, at least in, in the United States? So, yeah, yeah I mean, there, even the losses, the report of losses, I still have to wonder even if, if those are even actual losses. Yeah. So, yeah, let's dive into the presentation. I see you've okay. got 30 something slides. A lot. Yeah. Um, all right. So, slide number two. Um, is that, let's see. I think it's slide number All right, just uh, let's go to slide number two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I got you. All right. Uh, we can skip it if you want. Uh, but basically, yeah. So Hollywood itself, it, the land itself was actually purchased by Jewish people. Um, the first 
studios were created by Jewish people, Sue, uh, Cecil B. DeMille and Lasky and um, Griffith and so on. So um, again, I'm trying to, I want to be extremely careful because there's a lot of what they call anti-Semitic sentiments that are extremely uh, fascist going on right now. People are being forced, whether they like it or not, to choose two sides, either Judaism or Islam, which I'm completely against, uh, especially as a Christian. Um, so I don't want to be part of the problem, but I am the kind of person that is a, kind of a full disclosure kind of person. So if I'm going to speak about the roots of Hollywood, I have to be, you know, honest about it and talk about who, who established it. Um, in fact, there was a 2021 museum exhibit that got criticized by the ADL for excluding Jews as the creators or founders of Hollywood, probably because they were scared to be called anti-Semitic and they, they therefore were called anti-Semitic by the ADL. Uh, they spent a couple of years to modify that exhibit. And now again, after that, after including the Jews, now they're being again called anti-Semitic for what they're saying about the Jews. So, I mean, uh, when it comes to this discussion, for whatever reason, uh, most of the ADL, uh, you know, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't thing. So, but yeah, but undeniably, historically, it's a it's a fact that Hollywood was established by Jews. Um, let's do the next slide. Okay. Slide number th three, I think. There it is, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is a controversial film, uh, but it's one that's, uh, again, according to many sources, it's one that reestablished the Ku Klux Klan. It's said that, or reported, that the Ku Klux Klan had died around the turn of the 20th century. Um, kind of like around the turn of the 20th century, it had died uh, for all intents and purposes. And I've spent a lot of time in the quote South. So I could tell you firsthand that it was pretty much dead. It was non-existent. Um, but this movie in 1915, uh, produced by Griffith, who was a member of the Hollywood Masonic Temple, um, had basically spent 110,000 on what some call the first full feature, which is not completely accurate, but it's accredited for the, being that, probably because it's three hours long. But there was another one uh, by Paramount Pictures called The Squaw Man, 1914. It was actually the first, first feature, but at any rate. Um, so, yeah, basically, after a lot of controversy when this film came out, Again, the controversy came from a black editor from the, uh, not the Boston Globe, Boston, The Guardian. Um, he was also uh, a member of a Freemason organization. <laughs> um, I believe it was, what was it, Kappa? Uh, it was Phi Beta Kappa. He was the first black member of that organization. Um, and again, with all the controversy, people got curious and they had 3 million people go watch this film and nationwide. Again, this is 1915 people, the very beginning of Hollywood. Um, as far as the Hollywood Masonic Temple, there was actually this location of the first Oscars. The next Oscars were then housed across the street. Other things are being filled there including Jimmy Kimmel's TV show. Um, Jimmy Kimmel, if you're not familiar, he was in a game show called um, When Ben Stein's Money and um, The Man Show. Um, He's an alleged but, comedian. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of his either. But, um, yeah, so he's got uh, evidently Masonic roots. Uh, he's also part of this, uh, this Masonic temple, Hollywood temple and so on. Also, you may have heard of a, a trilogy called The Godfather that was, a, they had mafia advisors uh, when it came to the production of that film. And they were talking about mafia influence and how they were pushing uh, Hollywood producers around to get their way. So those that believe that the mafia is related to Freemasonry, 
Well, then even in the 20th century, it gets evolved in that way too. But I'm demonstrating here that even at the very beginning from the birth of the nation, what some are calling the first full feature, um, they were involved. All right. Well, we can go on to the next one. All right. So here we have, let me make sure. Okay. I me. Mean, yeah, this is about me. We can, I was kind of, I added, included this slide in case people don't know too much about me. Just a couple of quick notes. Um, I have had theological formation for over a decade, which didn't end as well as it should have. I had a, at, you know, I was raised by mass media uh, extensively, literally raised by it. So at some point in my life, I became atheist. Um, without trying to be or want to be, I wasn't mad at God or anything. I just, uh, a product of mass media, and therefore I stopped believing. I thought anything um, supernatural or spiritual was silly and would involuntarily laugh if anyone had mentioned anything like that. And it was through Tai Chi <laughs> that I actually had a spiritual awakening, um, unsuspectedly. Um, Scott got, went into shock, literally, and got scared uh, got the fear of God in me, essentially, and through that process. And then slowly but surely uh, went back to God, rediscovered God, got a calling, got into the theological uh, formation for, for a while. Um, that began my academic career where I started an education. Uh, and I got a, you know recognition for, my, for psychology, um, instructional technology, I've been involved in student film production, student orgs, um, took uh, courses on film production, got, been part of a, a movie, been on set for TV shootings and uh, movies and so on, Iron Man 3, the um, list goes on. So I've been around it a fair bit. Uh, not as much as some, I'm no Martin Scorsese, but I've got a fair idea of how this stuff works. Um, yeah, I'm also in the process. I've been in the process for a while trying to publish children's books. But, uh, you know, right now I've, I'm stuck on that. But enough about me. I think that's all I got to say about me and my credentials here. Okay, so five. And this stuff should be pretty elementary, you guys. Um, I'm sure everyone here has heard of the Pavlov experiment. Uh, also the bubble doll. Those are the two most common ones. Just in case, let me briefly go over it. The Pavlov experiment is where um, a dog was, they rang up, uh, he rang a bell so the dog can, can hear it. And then he would ring the bell and present food and the dog would start salivating. And then he would ring the bell, but the food was absent, but the dog continued to salivate. Some of us can probably relate to that. If we've seen like a McDonald's commercial for, for example, we hear the ding, 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 ding. ding. I mean, there's a reason to spend all that money on those jingles. It's to get us salivating. That's just one example. Um, then the Bobo doll experiment. Well, this one, again, with all of academia, all of academia, just so you'll know, is controversial. In fact, academics, some, or at least some academics, look forward to the controversy so they can be peer reviewed. Um, but he, this is another one that's controversial, and I don't see why. The argument is that the children were set up in a, in a, in a position where they would, of course, do what they're seeing on television. And this is what the experiment was. They put a bunch of different toys in a room and let the children go in there freely without any direction. And on the TV, there's one TV there. They had a woman with this bubble doll you see in the, in the center, and she was taking a hammer and hitting it and doing, you know, punching it and, and striking the, the bubble doll in different ways. And so the children seeing the person on the screen mimic that behavior. And so it, it represents how basically, how can I put it, monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. We like to mimic what we see, even if it's on television. And there's other research that shows and when it's real people, we are more likely to do that versus cartoons. But these days, cartoons are surrealistic. I kind of wonder what that research looks like, even for animations. The Stanford experiment, uh, there was a movie made about that. That was quite intense. Basically, people pretending to be prison guards and prisoners, um, and that got out of hand, and they had to stop it early. Uh, some people might wonder, how is that 
relevant to us today. And so there was an incident around, I think it was 2016, basically when Trump got elected, um, this guy set himself on fire. Yeah. I just yeah. want to mention something to, sure. to um, that Stanford experiment. It's, it's lately, it's being considered as a fraud, as something that right. is nothing like what, what actually occurred. And uh, one, one of the one of the participants admitted that he was faking it. So, you know, the, the professor the professor turned evil. The students did not, and I, I think so. So there's a lot of fraud involved in that and misreporting. So there's there's a, there's some questions around it these days. It's not considered legitimate anymore. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, all of academia, all the research, all of it. There's you're not going to find a single research um, project that has, does that is not flawed. It's impossible. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, doesn't. Uh, yeah, I've heard of that, and I'm not surprised one bit. But I mean, to, you can read in the journal Nature, for instance, that I mean, I think it's well accepted in academia, although it's not maybe as well known in public. But something like half of all scientific research that is published is fraudulent. Yeah, I would say more. I would say that's so. That's yeah, a at least number. I mean, I think it's acknowledged in academia that significant portion. Of, of of scientific papers and research that are published these days Lauren, are fraudulent, are biased yeah. for money, for whatever reasons, they're not repeatable. So, so, so a large portion of what we call science is completely faked. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't think that's that's controversial. That's acknowledged within science. Yeah, Lloyd, can I be frank? And I don't, I don't, I, don't, I would even take it further. I don't, I wouldn't even go further than these days. I would, I, would, I kind of wonder about the institution of academia itself. And I've been in a lot of them in and out for the past couple of decades. Professional student, what they call me. So, um, and abroad. Yeah, I mean it's it's absolute crap. You know, it's uh, forgive again, forgive my frankness, but it, to to put it in layman's, it's one big circle jerk. If you know, if you're not inside that inner circle, then you know, you know, you're kind of like me. You know, an idealist that is trying to get published, but instead doing doing content on YouTube. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me actually get a button. Let me go to my screen share and just change my screen sharing mode um, because let me end my screen share. And then reshare because I'm, I'm only sharing a portion of the screen. Let me just do that again. I'll just do this. Now then I'll bring this in. Uh, just to mention a couple of things here. Um, this one, this is in the Economist. Now I'm just this is just off the cuff. I don't have the original articles that I am referring to here, but there's a worrying amount of fraud in medical research, and this is not just in medical research. And there's another one. It's time to get serious about research fraud. So, you know, there's, there's, there is a huge significant amount. I mean, estimates are 25% on the low end. And I've seen the journal Nature, I think, put out a stat of about 50%. So, yeah, we've got some serious problems in academia in terms of yeah, fraud. To say the least. And there's a lot of people that are that are addressing that. Uh, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories and how you feel about that, but it just so happens that a lot of these groups align each other with that. And I kind of referenced that um, subtly in this, in this presentation, but it's interesting that they're all to me have one common denominator and they're all anti-Christian regardless of what group they belong to. Yeah. Um, At least 10,000 yeah. sham papers last year. And that's the tip of the iceberg. Mm. Yeah, all that money, people, all the grant money and so on for, for, for shams. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right. So Project Mockingbird. Oh, sorry. You go back up. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, actually, I mean, yeah, basically, I don't know. Again, this is a conspiracy theory stuff that I've just heard recently and I've looked into it because I felt validated. I'm taking, again, a different approach. I'm taking uh, uh, judge by the fruits, the outcomes kind of thing, um, a quantitative approach where people like Jay Dyer, um, you know, get into the whole academic thing. They look into this research. That's the first time I heard about Project Mod Mockingbird and MK Ultra. I looked into it myself. It turns out these are um, disclosed, undisclosed documents. These are federal documents. I do have links, uh, but I can't share the links myself in in the chat. Well, well look, I mean, I'll just I'll just throw in a little bit, then we can move to the next slide. But the project mockingbird a mockingbird repeats things so you tell it something it repeats it so this is a method of parroting think last week 
where after Kamala Harris's interview with with uh, Brett Baer, there were about ten articles published the next day where, it, where all these editors, at least ten that I know of, at least, where these editors would use the word "testy" in the headline or the subheadline. Oh, she has wow. a testy interview. She has a testy interview. You've all seen the YouTube videos where you've got dozens, literally dozens and dozens, of of news uh, website of news broadcasts where the with the talking heads are repeating exactly the same lines even though these are dozens and dozens of different uh, organizations so clearly there's a script and of course we all know from the twitter files from the facebook files from mike benz's fantastic talk two weeks ago that that the media is infiltrated by the cia and other other interests so i think i, I don't think that i don't think anyone is is shocked or surprised by that i think that's well acknowledged now oh, cool yeah it's good to hear yeah, and again, yeah, another example was the whole Orson Welles um, War of the Worlds radio broadcast and the impact that had, and the lockdown. Right. Yeah, and uh, the internet, how much that's controlled us, and you know, we went against our own common sense. Um, yeah, this is just a, a really quick overview, kind of a parallel between media and, and this, some of its themes included, of course, would be sexism, um, racism. Uh, those of us that are in these circles are all completely familiar with Islam and how it promotes all of these things. Um, you know, killing people, the whole killing yourself. I mean, pro drugs, mm -hmm. and of course the sexual deviancy and all that, um, and the whole thing. Again, we're being censored heavily, so I, I'm trying to. Since it's, I'm, I'm on your channel, I'm actually self-censoring right now, which I hate. I never do that anywhere. But I want to make sure I don't I don't put you in jeopardy. So I'm not going to use these words. You can see them on screen. Um, so these are all, um, again, these are all facts. Whether you're looking at Reliance of the Traveler, you're looking at the Hadith, Quran itself, uh, the Life of Muhammad, what, whatever you're looking at, these are all part of Islam and also, of course, part of Hollywood. For decades yeah, I mean I think we can we can add cannibalism into the mix here yes. because Thank you for they're talking now from eating the bugs they're now going to well you know isn't it time that we started to eat dead people that that's actually oh. a thing which is crazy so yeah I mean all of these all of these seriously what's the word we would use here all of these um seriously debauched <laughs> um immoral things are, are, yeah. are being discussed by the left I mean that they are descending yeah. into evil Exactly. And thank you for saying that, Lloyd. I actually wanted to bring that up, but I, I was worried you could call that a conspiracy theory. So that's why I intentionally left that out. No, it's being, I've seen it discussed by very credible sources, by, by genuine historians and politicians and media figures. It's, it's, not a, it's not a theory. It is happening. Okay. So I feel validated right now. You just validated. For years, I've been, I've been trying to tell people they're pushing us towards cannibalism. Again, this is one of the major themes that Hollywood pushes is cannibalism for a very long time now. Um, and here we are. I mean, I believe, anyways, I don't want to get off on, on tangents, but yeah, we well, are right. So Chico is asking, oh, are there any Muslim scholars that reject the reliance of the traveler? Only the ones that are embarrassed by it. Those are the only ones that reject it. And only for long enough to deny it and then get on with their lives and keep using it again. Mm. Sorry, go on. No, that's fine. Yeah, let, let's, let, let's, let me, we can, we're going to get off on a tangent if we keep going down this track. So let's just keep going. Let's just go on to the next slide. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, so this is true, and I agree. There's, there's these things. We see them. We see them happening in the world. They're manifesting in the world. They are in the media, and we saw these stories coming up, um, and and they become prevalent in the movies. And is life creating art, or is art creating life, or is it just collusion? One has to ask. Mm. So, quickly looking at print, and now we're getting into the the specific theme of uh, dawah of uh, promoting Islam here. Now, again, Muslims continually complain that uh, Hollywood or, or media is uh, wrongfully slandering them, is a prejudice towards them, um, and is always uh, they're always portraying them negatively. I'm going to demonstrate here that's an absolute lie, and the people that are complaining about that should be investigated for whether or not they're supporting terrorism, and I'll, and I'll get into that. So you can see here some examples through the decades, some very popular ones. Malcolm X, uh, a very prominent uh, Islamic figure. Mike Tyson, uh, now very public about his uh, affiliations with Islam. Um, Colin Kaepernick, do you guys remember that guy? The, the whole kneel, kneel down guy? 
Yeah. His, yeah. His girlfriend, um, I know, is I, why my his girlfriend is Muslim, which just so happens. I got to wonder, I didn't I didn't do a, too much of a deep dive in himself. I didn't see any, any um, Islamic ties with him, but I got to wonder if that played a role too. I, I, that that's a stretch. Of course it did. I mean, I would I would say yes. <laughs> As a man, of course we. <laughs> but again, that's uh, that's that's argumentative. I'm just putting that out there for food of for food for thought. And also, uh, these people, when you say Islam, they're not necessarily Orthodox Muslim like Sunni. Many of them are affiliated to the Nation of Islam, which, to put mm -hmm. it mildly, these people are whack jobs. Their beliefs are nothing short of ludicrously laughable. Um, I have two videos on my channel about about this guy, Malcolm X, and the Nation of Islam, and um, you should really watch them. They're short. They're like three to five minutes each. It's The Nation of Islam has the most bogus ideas you've ever heard. Yeah. So pretty much we all, I think we all can agree on this one. I just wanted to put it out there so we can move on to the next slide just for the sake of time. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you've got also the communist manifesto. I mean, I'll try it. <laughs> I slipped the on communist that. Manifesto, yeah. This thing, obviously this is not, if you look at James Lindsay's work, I mean, he's calling this now a religious work. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a discussion on on economics. So that they try to sell it as that. Remember, they first called this the um, this was the the communist catechism, right? Because it was meant to be a religious catechism, which made which took the the idea of the Catholic catechism, and introduced this new religion called socialism or Marxist socialism, Marx's flavor or brand of socialism. And it introduced the catechism. It was Engels who told him, look, let's not call it that. It's too it's too blunt. It's too blatant what it is. Call it the Communist Manifesto and move away from the religious naming because this is a religious system. And yeah, and of course, we can talk one day about the, the overlap and the similarities between communism and Islam. Well, that's why I included it in there, but I, I don't want to get off on, on that. But yeah, thank you for saying that. Um, so yeah, I've got some links. I don't know again how to share these, but I, yeah, basically for the MK Ultra, the the uh, Project Mockingbird here again with Project Veritas. Uh, let me just say for your audience, uh, it's easy to find if you like do a search on uh, UBoob there with um, Project Veritas, NPR, Muslim Brotherhood. If you type those three uh, things in there, you'll find a three part series where they did undercover. Uh, investigation on NPR pretending to be the Muslim Brotherhood and basically got NPR saying that, yeah, they can dictate whatever um, NPR is going to report uh, for certain amounts of money, uh, which probably is no surprise to us these days. But, you know, back in, I think this was 2012, give or take. Um, uh, yeah, it was controversial. Um, yeah, the taxi to the dark side. Uh, in the documentaries, You've got to wonder, I don't, I don't have, this is probably a research project in itself, but I got to wonder how many of these documentaries are actually pro-Islam because there's a lot of pro-Islam documentaries out there, especially these days. But let's look at this one. Taxi, Taxi the Dark Side. The description is, exposes the haunting details of USA's torture and interrogation practices during the war in Afghanistan. So is this pro-Islam, anti-America? You know, again, the second documentary is No End in Sight, which uh, is described as a comprehensive look at the Bush administration's conduct of the Iraq war and its occupation of the country. All right. So, again, is this pro-Islam, anti-Islam? Um, you we all know Fahrenheit 9-11. Well, here's the thing. If I can just add something in there. I mean, look, everyone claims that they invaded the, the whole that they invaded Iraq because of Israel pulling the strings. The simple fact is that Saudi Arabia wanted America to go into Iraq and take out Saddam Hussein. He was a rival of the Saudi regime. And Bush was deep in with the Saudis. I've covered that in my Arab lobby series, just how tight the Bush family, just how infiltrated the Muslim Brotherhood were into the Bush government as well as the Saudis 
the, the, they, George Bush was a little dancing monkey for the Saudis. Saudis were very much in control, and he was at least, that we know, of $1.5, $1.6 billion deep into the pockets of the Saudis. So there was a lot of Saudi manipulation, but of course, when you have control of the media, you'd say, no, it's the Israelis, it's this, it's that. These guys are floating on money. And so, yeah, we don't look at the Saudi involvement in things or the Iranian involvement in things. Or and of course, fuck. Michael Moore. I don't trust the word that guy says. No, hey, man. Yeah, and I hate to admit, I you know I bought into all of his stuff, hook line, hook line and sinker back in the day. But yeah, um, but yeah, also money from the Far East. You know, again, I don't want to get off on too many tangents, but I want people to start thinking about BRICS and what's going on globally with that, and how much influence they've had, especially media, especially in the twenty first century, but late late twentieth right. too. Um. Let's see. Yeah, the art of a posture is one that was actually banned. Uh, I've watched it. If you go to the website, there's actually a couple of documentaries available. It's quite intense. I don't encourage people to watch it because it will scar you for life. But I'm not. I'm not overstating that. Um, so, but if you're someone who's really curious or whatever, um, you will see people how they're actually being uh, treated by um, these these Muslims. So it's just a bunch of clips of people being massacred, basically. It's like a face of death, uh, Islamic style. So, mm -hmm. but there's also a narration by Osama Dakdak, who, um, who cites a lot of scripture and so on. So I honestly don't know what to make of that one. I'm kind of curious how people who have seen Art of Imposture, how they feel about it. Have you, have you watched it? I've spoken to the author, the creator of it, the director, or the, you know, the guy who made it. I've spoken to him for a while. But uh, I haven't watched it. I've seen. I mean, I guess I'm familiar with it, but I also don't necessarily want to want to lay yeah. awake at night with exactly. these brainstorming images in my head. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a very fair warning, people. I, curiosity killed the cat. I mean, you will be scarred for life if you do watch it. Um, yeah, thank you. So, there again, media is. Um, uh, the question here is: Is Islam being portrayed, or Muslims are they being portrayed negatively? positively or neutrally is it all about the money you can see here a bunch of different examples of uh how muslims are being portrayed positively um again the the first example this is a hi historical uh, islamic account portrayed as uh Ga galilee um, an action kind of series then there's the transplant series where a guy i believe is coming from pakistan comes and he ends up luckily getting a job as a doctor. Um, okay, so it's a pro pro hijra. Let's, if I can if I can say that, if I'm allowed to say that, uh, the FBI series. I mean, yeah, the FBI, as we all know, according to mass media, at least the FBI is the worst organization on the planet. Um, the CIA is the only uh, a secret agency that does anything bad on this planet. Um, Meanwhile, they've got this uh, main character who's very jihadi looking, who's uh, who's the pro the protagonist of, of this series. Really, drop a one in the chat if you think the FBI is is trustworthy, and drop a two if you think the FBI is corrupt. For for many years now, because man, I'm going to put my vote, and I've dropped a two there. That's my vote. The FBI is, and I think the American Department of Justice is hopelessly corrupt and biased. And also, we know that they've had in their training on extremism, they've had all of the Mus the Muslim Brotherhood has, has so heavily infiltrated the government that all comments, everything related to Islam and everything, it's all been sanitized, stripped out, and you're not allowed to say nasty things about Muslims anymore. So even the CIA, that, that's all been taken out. You're, you're supposed to sing Kumbaya and Hug a Tree when it comes to Islamic terror. Wow. Um, yeah, so uh, Disney, by the way, we're going to see some samples of that. Uh, and this is going to early to mid 20th century here. They're, they're pro-Islamic. Marvel, by the way, is owned by the, Disney owns all kinds of things. Uh, it's, it's quite insane. Um, and Sony is pursuing... I'm getting off of tangents here, forgive me. But yeah, Sony's pers been pursuing uh, buying out Disney. Um, there's there's murmurs that they kind of already have. But anyway, um, yeah, so Miss Marvel is, again, a Muslim character, a Muslim family, portrayed in a very positive light. Um, the, even the family members, they have no superpowers. They're 
they're they're you know positive this x-men character obviously um all kinds of islamic superhero series that are all uh, positive and heroic or, or very powerful um the iron sheik when i was young I, this is back in the wwf days if you guys ever heard of that uh this is uh wrestling the fake wrestling right so he was uh, one of my personal favorites <laughs> Uh, again, I was raised on American media, so I had no idea. Um, I Dream of Genie, mid 20th century series. So again, came out this, at the same time that we had Bewitched, also blonde hair, blue eyed uh, actress, uh, star of that series. But I Dream of Genie, yeah, I mean, the prize of Islamic um, right hand possessions there, um, you know, dressed very provocatively. Um, <laughs> Thunder Swan, <laughs> Miss Marvel's superpower is that she has equal intelligence to a Muslim man. <laughs> what? Ouch. There we go. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, what happened to regular? Co yeah, I mean, these days, at least here in Poland, um, you know, my nephew, I sit with him sometimes for hours. I mean, he's a growing kid, so you read to him and you, you, you sing songs with him and you watch cartoons with him and, and, and at least we watch things like Paw Patrol and, and stuff about firemen. But, I mean, his parents, I mean, here in Poland, at least this LGBT nonsense hasn't oh. made a it hasn't made a dent, really. So thank heavens for oh, that. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great to hear. That's, you know that's what's great. crazy? I was amazed looking at his curriculum because he started school like, two months ago in September. He started school. Um, his first, his first, and it's, it's kind of like preschool. It's not preschool. It's like, like your basic school introduction. And they do three hours, I think, of religious instruction every week. Wow. Yeah, wow. They do religion. So they cover, you know, Jesus and the angels and God and the Bible and the New Testament. Crazy stuff. <laughs> wow. I'm speechless. As I'm, it's like bizarre you, world to me when you hear that. You wouldn't see that in America, for instance. No. Like, whereas here, they, they are taught religion. They taught church and, and, and Jesus and morals and like, Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's inspiring. Yeah, meanwhile, we have the UFC. Um, that's a mixed martial arts, the, the latest craze, you know, doing all their stuff in the Middle East. So, um, yeah, where are we at? Oh, yeah, yeah so there's this positive image. I mean, look here, he's by the sword, the sword of Islam, and you've got these very positive images of Islam. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to create a false image. They're trying to pretty mm -hmm. fine image of, so you, you allow it in. It's the Trojan horse, basically. It's, it's what yeah. it is. It's the Trojan horse. And that, that was another one of my favorite characters, the Arabian Knight. <laughs> I like, uh, like the, uh, anyways. So yeah, the Sheik. This is a silent film, 1921. Um, you know, you can argue that this is both ways, but if it's both, if it's showing both, Aside so positive and negative of, of Islamic culture, then you can't really say it's anti-Islamic. You got to argue that it's neutral. I would argue that it's more pro than anything. The theme mm -hmm. of this story is that this um, the sheikh, he's um, you know he's uh, basically a, a bandit. Um, he has slaves. He kidnaps the main actress that we see down here in the bottom purple. He kidnaps her. She's a she's from I think a British visitor that's naive about Islam, and so he basically makes her makes her his slave. Um, yeah, spoiler alert! I'm going to tell you this whole story real quickly. Basically, yeah, what happens is there's a conflict between him and another tribe. Um, he becomes injured, terminally ill, and now she's got the uh, nightingale effect, and uh, you know she's um, uh, basically. You know, yeah, she's falling in love with the guy, you know, and I was just, you know, crying over him and all that. And then he comes to and then, you know, they live happily ever after. That's uh, that's the Sheik, 1921, early Hollywood uh, and the son of the Sheik. Insane, right? Yeah. Romanticizing. Wow. I mean, the, the turnaround started, though, just to mention to the audience, and we discussed this just briefly, you and me, uh, just for the audience, uh, Nico and I didn't really have a chance to discuss the content of the slide, so it's a surprise to me as well. But um, it just sounded like an interesting premise, and I thought, you know, we should do this. Um, but briefly, there was a movie that I actually watched. I watched a significant portion of it maybe 15, 20 years ago. I don't know when it came out, but somewhere in that time time period. 
called Real Bad Arabs, and I, I believed it. And it's about how Hollywood vilifies Muslims. And this this Dr. Jack Shaheen, this academic, was going on about Muslims are the bad guys, the terrorists, the bank robbers, the the guys always getting killed because they are evil and bad. And we need to do. And he was. And I felt guilty about it because I believed mm -hmm. it. And I went, "Yes, we're doing it." And now I realize, look, man, it's the stereotype because it's true. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it started here when the, the the turnaround started here. This was the campaign to turn it around and you can't say bad things about brown people now you've got to vilify white men i would love to if i if i don't know i don't want to outwear my luck i'm not I definitely want to put you on the spot but just to, some food for thought and uh, you know personally i'm not a biggest fan of, of of doing reviews but i did you know i think you shared that with me and i did skim through i didn't watch it it's really i don't want to subject myself to that yet unless i have to but if you'd be willing to do another stream to do a review of that i would love to tear this guy a new one uh, step mm, by step, okay. everything great, wonderful. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, let's just yeah, let's just keep it yeah, keep it factual. And yeah, I mean, yeah. this is something new for my channel. I mean, I try not to be pigeonholed. So yeah, but let's let's go on. So I mean, this goes way back. It's amazing that this positive mess message about Islam, this romanticizing of it, goes way back. Yeah. So the the seeds of it are found a century plus ago. I mean, if you watch the film, you'll see even like uh, when when this uh, this sheik he, he enters his village, they're treating him like absolute royalty. Everyone's you know kissing up to him and all these things. So it's quite uh, yeah, it's exaggerated um, their portrayal and how positive it is, even though it's showing that they're they're you know there's uh, robbers and so on and so forth. Um, it's yeah, if you watch, you'll see it's all really positive or mostly positive. Um, again, Walt Disney. This one is a bit of a stretch. Um, this is, I've, I've presented it to a couple people and a lot of, a lot of people are just, ah, I don't know about that, but we'll look at other Walt Disney examples where it's outright a uh, pro-Islam. But, uh, this is, uh, from a 1944 fi film, as you see the, the three caballeros. Caballeros. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Love it. Oh, and I, I was wondering if someone would correct me about that. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically you can see that this looks like Barack. I mean, this is a bit of a stretch. Uh, I'm not saying that it is definitively Barack. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But look at the at the church in the same movie. Um, isn't that quite Islamic? Uh, with a Christian church that seems to be, or is that or is that my misinterpretation of, of that little uh, I mean, sequence? This, this minaret on top, you mean the minaret yeah. idea? Yeah, I mean, it could be Orthodox, it could be Russian, it could be sort of Armenian style, which was yeah. influenced by the architecture of Turkey. But, but you make a fair point. I mean, it's quite a, it's quite a juxtaposition compared to this here in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there is a. I mean, look, it's, it's sometimes it's subtle. I mean, but yeah, there's the the imagery seems disconnected, so you let it in because. There's no overt messaging, so you don't, you know, what you can get someone to imagine, they don't resist, right? When you try to give them facts, figures, and data, people reject it. But when you, you know, when you can make them imagine something, then they accept it, and it sinks in, and then later on you can build upon that imagery. That, that would be one way to, to do some sort of subliminal manipulation. Yes, they've done a lot of that, especially when it comes to the cross. A lot. All right, we can go on to the next slide. I just want to introduce that. As this is a, a very common good point here. The, and I, it echoes things I've said on the channel. The media's main narrative is individuality about the last 30 years. Yeah, you can be anything you want. It's about you. Find yourself. Follow your heart. And it's now turned into pronouns and and trannies, quite bluntly. You know, And, uh, I mean, go back a few years and you'll you'll see about factory farming. The whole battery farming, factory farming, farming is bad. Farmers are evil. Farming, killing the, 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 the cows, that's bad, right? Which they try to paint all farming, all farmers as evil because they painted farming as factory farming, right. right? So you've got a few of these bad apples, let's say, and then and they try to paint literally everybody. Now, these governments in Europe are literally shutting down farms, killing paying to slaughter animals, viable animals, perfectly healthy animals, and they want to destroy farms and replace them with housing for migrants or because of too much nitrogen in the soil. So it's gone from this kind of farming is bad to all farming is bad 
so they can now starve you to death. It's a death cult. So it's a slippery slope, and you end up in the most absurd places. Yeah. All right. So it's a flying donkey, just Janice. That is a flying donkey, and it's an interesting point. I mean, it's it, it leaves you to think. Yeah, you accept it as a kid. So when you learn the story of Muhammad and the flying donkey, then you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about this. This is good. I need to. I need to convert to this religion, right? Yeah. The flying. I mean, I was like that myself as a kid with the flying carpet, the uh, the, the 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 lamp, the yeah. magic lamp. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Steve right. Gordon, thank you very much. And you can thank my guest as well. It's not only me. I, I will be returning to more solo streams on my own content lately, but I've I've just had people approach me and <laughs> ask me if they can do things on my streams. So lately I've had many guests, but thank you, Steve. All right. So I've, I'm going to break this down to three categories of, uh, of Hollywood films and whether or not it's, uh, again, are they portraying Muslims in negative light or are they... Are they pushing Islam or is it just neutral? Um, this category is whether or not these American movies are are portraying US military in a positive light. So this is a Clint Eastwood film, really popular, one of my favorites. But um, a spoiler alert, does anyone know what happens at the end of this film? He gets murdered. I mean, they don't show it, yeah. but he gets killed by a student he's training. Right. So that's, you know, I mean, a little wah-wah at the end. I mean, maybe a bit stretched, but I would I wouldn't know if the way it ends is definitely not a happy ending. They could have just left that out or, or something to that effect or or better tribute or something. I don't know. But I don't like the way the movie ended, even though the, most of the movie portrayed him as someone who was uh, well-skilled and, and was able to take out one of the most notorious um, uh, Muslim terrorist uh, snipers. So, all right, let's go on to the next one. Now, I'm going to try to zip through these. I'm going to spend like maybe one to two minutes on each uh, from here on out. Um, 12, 12 Strong, again, another one of my favorites. Um, inspiring. I really enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. But again, how does this end? Or is it, you know, is it like a Delta Force? Now, there's a good one. <laughs> Sci fi. You know, I even know someone who knows the guys, and I believe I spoke to one of the guys who was on this mission. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I don't need, I didn't realize at the time, but I believe that I, that I've actually met and spoken with one of the guys and he might've been in tra a training class. I did at one, one time or when I attended, but yeah, none of them died though, but they do show that the people they're with, there's good Muslims and bad Muslims and we should just avoid the bad ones and the good ones are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is. I'm starting with a weak argument, just so you'll know. All right, all right. We'll go to the next one. Um, Zero Dark Thirty. I imagine everyone's heard heard of this one. Um, yeah. So it's interesting that this one. It talks about, in retrospect, a pretty historical moment, and uh, you got to without getting too much into politics. It's kind of interesting that. They had the guy um, in their sights for so long, but they didn't do anything for quite a while until it was pretty much an election year. Uh, that's all I really want to say about that. I want to get into another off another. That's thing. that's happened before. If you look at um, the when the when the Iranians occupied, you remember the the movie Who Dares Wins with the SAS when they became famous for rescuing the hostages of the Iranian assault on the British embassy. I hate to say I didn't watch that one. Okay, so I'm, I might get one or two facts wrong here, but 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 the general story as so is that so they were able to go in much sooner and kill the terrorists and get the hostages out, but the American government, because they wanted to also time it, I think for an election or for some other important event, they delayed it and let everyone suffer just so that they could get the glory at a given time. So this is not unusual that it's that it's used for political purposes. They'll let them rot until they're ready because to do it mm. now would not be beneficial politically, something like I'm, that. I'm going to ask you about that movie later on Skype, so don't forget it. <laughs> um, all right, so we can go to the next slide. Thanks, Luke. And I apologize for, you know, I feel like I'm bossing you around here. Please forgive me. I'm, you know, I'm, okay. I was fumbling around with the tech earlier, so thank you for doing that. Um, all right, so Lone Sur Survivor, 20, yeah, 2013. Again, another one of my favorites. But I think 
yeah. I mean, <laughs> I got here. Spoiler alert. See the title for what happens. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, this is a weak argument, but it doesn't necessarily, compared to movies like, let's say, Sylvester Stallone's uh, Rambo, it's not, it's a, again, I understand those works of fiction and all that, but Hollywood takes creative liberties all the time. Why, why are these portrayals that don't always end so great or something that effect? All right, let's go on to the next one. Should be in the next category. Yeah. Okay. So are the Kaffir soldiers competent? Or sorry. So Black Hawk Down. Um, again, based on a historical moment, basically showing how U.S. soldiers are getting obliterated by a, a lesser power, arguably. Argo, another good one. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I would say we're going down a list now of movies that just basically show the U.S. forces as, yeah, incompetent at best, incompetent if or evil or something to that effect. Um, yeah, not, yeah, we can go on to the next one if you want. Okay, yeah. Savior. This is one of my personal favorites. I think this was an HBO or Showtime original. I can't remember one of, the, one, of the, one of those channels. This was about the Bosnian War. I uh, know this is another controversial one. Um, I would say this is the, a film that, that showed or came closest to showing the both sides of, of the story. In other words, uh, pro-Islam or um, showing Christianity in, a, in the right light. What happens basically is the main character... Um, he does. He becomes a a mercenary, and he gets uh, he gets affected by an incident where his friend dies, and he loses it. And he walks into a mosque and he starts shooting Muslims randomly while while they're praying. That's how the movie starts. And then from there, um, you know, he goes goes into Bosnia as, as American. You know, he starts um, uh, doing all these crazy things and witnessing all these crazy things. The, the Christian Serbs are being evil. And then later in the movie, you'll see Muslims being evil. And meanwhile, he's he's a struggling with his own spiritual identity. Um, and I don't want to spoil it. It's actually a good movie. I'll just leave it at that. But I will say it arguably shows both sides, even though it shows Christians in the, in the very horrendous light, the, the Serbs. Actually, but the, parts, so. yeah, I mean, I'm going to get my facts wrong. Yeah, I worry about that. So I need to be careful. But in this case, I, I used to know a a Serbian girl and she, she's married to a friend of mine and um, this was a war where they were prosecuting the war against the Christians supporting the Muslims and and it was horrific and I, I just found this one to be really backwards and upside down mm. and I mean now, now you've got the UN I mean the UN is actively the UNHCR and so on actively supporting Hamas turning yeah. a blind eye yeah. to Hamas providing some material supplies to Hamas Hamas workers actually being members of Hamas, leaders in Hamas, running cells in Hamas. And so, yeah, I mean, you've got you've got some really odd things going on these days. Yeah. And the, the, the gang at, uh, for, I hope you don't mind my plugging others, but in the Cross and Crescent discussion group do a really good job of addressing the UN and UNRWA and all that. And how, you know, they're funding Islam. They're being sued for that, by the way, thankfully. Um, there's some pushback and they're being exposed to some degree for that. Right. Um, Courage Under Fire. Uh, this is... Um, uh, really again, enjoyed it. Yeah, I loved it back in the day, too. Um, but yeah, basically, throughout the movie, the U.S. soldiers are being portrayed as incompetent, wrongful. Um, you know, they're in tri at trial. Um, yeah, and of course, it's, it's the whole gender issue thing going on there, too, uh, which is standard Hollywood, especially these days. But yeah, just basically showing the U.S. military as 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 evil. All right, we'll go to the next one. That's all I got for that. This is a post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I have, you know, this is something that's kind of um, near dear to me—a topic, so to speak. I befriended in my youth uh, a Vietnam veteran, who um, who back then I was wearing bomb Baghdad T-shirts again. 
a product of mass media time mag i was had a subscription to time magazine so um yeah uh and he saw that in me and he let me know what war is actually like started sharing all these stories with me and then another vietnam veteran a friend a, a father's friend um shared his pictures that he took and reenacted an incident uh, that he took those pictures which i won't do because that reenactment literally scarred me for life his reenactment of what he did what he partook of what he took pictures of his reenactment scarred me for life so you can imagine what, what it might have been like to actually be in that um so yes sir you know what might be a really good film is um another one to mention that but this one yeah this one similar this one people might really like this one rules of engagement yeah and it's also crazy that the another thing you see though is that the bad guys are white the good guys are black generally speaking i yeah. mean the one with the one we just saw here um you know good yeah. guy black bad guys white you know you get, so so, so the, there's a couple of potential messages there i mean not confirming anything but but just there's there's a couple of potential messages there that Women goes victim, yeah black men victims white men bad yeah exactly and i'm glad you brought the woman victim thing that's exactly why when it came to casting you can see even here uh they made sure to get someone that you can uh, sympathize with if not empathize with um again this is this is something that's very real i'm i'm, I'm actually anti-war because of those experiences with those two gentlemen that i just told you about um and by the way one of them taught me how to literally rip people's hearts out with my bare hands and so on and so forth so uh you know, you're um, not gonna be doing that no of course i'm not gonna be doing that i mean you got to train for one thing but yeah even yeah. If, I, if i could do it yeah um but um so yeah i mean it's just well think of this though one of the one of the things that you've got here is that i think one of the potential messages they might be sending because look i mean some of these films were great like rules of engagement i thought it was a great film i've watched some of these twice right some of them three times they're, they're really good films like so this is a genuinely good film mm. um however um there's also an anti-war message yeah. being sent don't support the military don't, don't support your government which means that if you're if you're not supporting your government and you are anti-patriot then you are allowing the bad guys to win because you're undermining your nation's defense you're undermining pride and patriotism exactly that's exactly my point and i i just wanted to premise that that i do understand i'm not trying to be critical of those that have post-traumatic stress disorder again it's something personal I, i've got other people that are close to me that now suffer from that um but yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly why I'm showing these movies. That is the underlying message that, you know what? These American military, only the Americans, by the way, not the Muslims, but just the American military is evil and so on and so forth. And if you partake in, in combat, if you know, then you're going to suffer, your family's going to suffer and so on. Thank you. Interesting. They cry wolf and then they turn around and eat the sheep from Roth Mad Monkey Design. Um, for the audience, um, all of Nico's links, there's an entire bio in the description box. It's quite lengthy and detailed. So all of his links, all of his socials are there. And um, yeah, so are mine. And guys, if you do like this, please do like it, do share it, do subscribe. Follow me on X as well. I post a lot of small articles and little bite-sized nuggets there as well, which you may find useful. And um, I do saw a little bit of, um, you know, debunking of various things there. So you might find that easy to digest. You know, a short tweet is easier than a than a two hour video on YouTube. And um, yeah, if you, if you do like what I do, please do support the channel. That is always very much appreciated. Um, yeah, please go on. Yeah. And uh, if anyone gets the idea to come to my channel, just be warned that I'm, I, on that channel, I get very obnoxious. So my apologies in advance for that. <laughs> All right, we can go to the next slide. The Hurt Locker or the next one? Um, oh, the, yeah, the, the Hurt Locker. Basically, that's yeah, the same thing, post-traumatic stress disorder. This one was an award winner. But, yeah, that's exactly, exactly what you said. They're using yet another way to undermine the U.S. military or patriotism. Or, you know, it's basically saying, well, if you, if you partake in this, then you're going to suffer emotionally and it's not worth it. What is the message that, that we get over and over and over again? Again, born on the 4th of July also. That, yeah, that. be peaceful. Do nothing. Let the bad guys win. That's kind of the message I'm hearing. Yeah, exactly. 13 hours, another good one. Um, 
one that I liked. Um, yeah, I think I would say most people are familiar with this and the story behind it. This is one that really bugs the heck out of me, um, especially uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, response to it when the movie came out. Um, and it's quite callous, you know, the whole collateral damage. You know, I don't call for anyone's death. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Muslims. I know this. I shouldn't be saying that as a Christian. But after all my experiences these recent years and uh, all that I've learned about Islam this past couple of years, it's uh, difficult to to have an open heart. And I'm, and I'm working on that. I'm being public about that. But um, that being said, I certainly don't want them to be genocide. I feel bad when I hear stories about uh, the leveling of cities and, and Palestine and so on. Um, but yeah, I mean, at some point you got to do what you got to do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, condemning it either. Uh, completely. Okay, that's just that's just. I mean, thirteen hours. No, I think, just a point of interest. Someone posted on my channel a few days ago a comment, and they stated that guys, remember, Christians are just supposed to bend over and let the barbarians right. win. Now, I'm just I'm paraphrasing what was said there, but apparently Christians are supposed to roll over and play dead when the bad guys come with the borders and and steal your houses, burn your property, and rape your wives. So apparently, that Christians, because Jesus didn't. Um, do anything mil military you know so therefore we are supposed to do exactly that and just die you know and like little cowards and um i mean being jesus is kind of for jesus there's that um would be my perspective but also for some reason paul speaks of the relationship between christians and governing authorities and he states that all authority comes from god rulers good rulers are considered God's servants and they must promote good and justice. So I don't think Jesus was a coward. Jesus was willing to die. That's great, but that's his example, not mine, right? So Romans 13, 4 says that governing authority does not bear the sword in vain. So I think this is a very biased, very one-sided view of, of, and it lets evil win. Remember, we also, and that same guy probably like tweets out every day, you know, all that evil needs to win is that good men do nothing. And yet here he going, he's going, Jesus did nothing in the face of evil. Jesus let people slap him around. So we also need to be slapped around and do nothing. Therefore, doing nothing, being a coward and letting evil win is the Christian way, which is hypocrisy. And I, I absolutely reject that. So now why would, why would authority bear a sword and not bear it in vain? It's an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Humans are doing that. Christians are in government. So yes, given that 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 governing authority is God given, the I, this whole idea of of this passive cowardice is is false. Um, your thoughts on that? Because yeah, I think no. these messages are, 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 are trying to push this this false view of we're supposed to just roll over and play dead and hope they hope they give it to us with Vaseline so at least we don't complain yeah. so much. I mean, yeah, it, it, even well, again, I think it's it's just designed uh, when you look at it as a whole, it's um, at least systematic, if not systemic. It's at least systematically um, undermining the U.S. military specifically. So, yeah, I completely agree with you. And, you know, another verse that some bring up is, um, you know, when Christ tells Peter to, you know, carry your sword, you'll need it where you're, where you're going. For the Catholics yep. and Orthodox, you know, where they have saints again, the Orthodox are celebrating right now St. Demetrius. Um, yep. And, yeah, so, you know, we're not, we're not foreign to the idea that you have to, for example, and one of them, this is actually, one of the movies actually use this line, lay down your life for the other. It's as the greatest form of love. Um, and, and these kinds of things. I, I completely agree with that again, but it's just, um, it's just heartbreaking to have to take a life, you know, but what are you going to do when, when that life is exponentially taking out many others you know, at that point, you got to do what you got. I mean, do. This, there's a, there's a distinction, you know, like they say, no, the, the, the 10 commandment says thou shalt not kill. No, it doesn't say that. It says thou right. shalt not murder. murder. Right. There's, there's a vast difference. Yes. So, so yeah, I think there's there's uh, there's people who are reading the Bible and going, well, well, I am the the main authority of the Bible, at least according to my brain, because the Holy Spirit's in my brain and it wouldn't lie to me. I don't need a church. I, I commune directly with Jesus. Don't need anyone to tell me nothing. And off they go. And it's, I, I think that's completely wrong. 
but we we need to defend ourselves we need to defend the west we cannot let our enemies define christianity for us amen all right um unless yeah. you got anything on 13 hours we can go on the next one yeah cool yeah this one again this one i just i just felt compelled to include um again i'm a disclosure guy um this one could probably go either way but um it's just it's it's a funny movie as you can see there's a lot of things going on here gender issues and all that too of course but I decided not to watch this. I was thinking about it, and I decided to give it a miss. Yeah, I mean, SNL cast member lead role is probably not. It's probably a red flag in itself. But yeah, I mean, long story short, yeah, it is portraying the military, U.S. military, especially the men, as uh, incompetent. So, so um, Eye in the Sky. I thought this, this was, was brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, this was excellent. Yeah. Great, yeah, great production value. Um, again, also really, know, really interesting moral choices and discussions. I mean, I must admit, this really highlighted the issues, gave it some real punch. You know, the story was 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 interesting. Mm. Oh, well, well, what do you mean? Like, do you mind expanding that? No, it, it 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 didn't shy away from the hard moral questions from mm. the from the political agendas, the 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 the, the psychological impact that was causing on the operators the the government people who are just trying to do their jobs i mean there's one there's one very interesting movie where, where the question is where they ask this mi5 where they tell the mi5 agent you can do good or you can do well and you have to choose mm. yeah no that's, that's a great point like uh, you know i really like this movie too for exa exactly for those reasons but um i just brought it up mostly because of what's going on with all the drones things all the drone strikes I know Israel is having problems not only with missiles, but the drones getting through, especially lately now that Hezbollah, not to get off on a yeah. tangent, but now that Hezbollah is involved. Um, so it's interesting that this movie came out 2015 when drones were kind of a, a new thing to us, at least the public. And now it's like a major contributor. And now Elon Musk and his uh, robot yeah. servant. I work for the company that the, the cameras they have on those drones. And the laser designators, I work to the company that, that manufacture those. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it at that. But I'm sure you got some stories to tell. <laughs> yeah, it's, good. it's inter I had an interesting life before I moved to Poland and became poor. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> Can relate to that. Um, yeah, by the way, I was, anyways, that's enough about me. Let's go on to the next slide. Um, the men who stare at goats. Very <laughs> funny. Yeah. I watched it like four times. This is See, incredibly funny. Yeah. So people hate me for ripping into the movies they love. Um, people who've uh, watched any of my, my live streams end up complaining like, Hey, you know what? You, you've ruined my, my pastime. So, and this is the kind of the curse of a film student too, by the way. way, no worries. You can't, as a film student, for those of you who might not know, once you start studying film, you can no longer watch a film now without analyzing how it's being made. And so it's kind of it's kind of cool to know these things, but then it's also a curse because you can't take the, put the cat back back in the bag, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, with the men who stare at goats, again, I, I'm including it because I don't think this is necessarily a even though it's based on a true story. Um, even the title itself, the men who stare at goats, is that. Isn't that a condescending? <laughs> so no, it's a, it's a, it's not a, it's actually actually you know that you mentioned it. I mean, it's like okay, you think of Afghanistan where the men stare at goats and the goats are scared. There's that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is really about men who. Uh, I mean, this is this is derived from a legitimate CIA experiment where they were trying to teach men to be assassins with their minds and to kill animals and mm -hmm. no use their brains to will a goat's heart to stop to kill it so they could weaponize these men to 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 be assassins mm -hmm. but it's still yeah i mean it's still a spoof right it's still a spoof on on those events now i don't know if uh, a spoof can be considered um uh, making it look heroic or positive or, or you know building it up but instead of kind of mocking it that's the sense. Yeah, but it pushes that the, that the U.S. government does freaky things, completely whack job, and and is into right. too much drugs. I mean, it does okay. push that message. It, it normalizes yeah. that. You know, 
I'm, I'm not disagreeing with it, but in, in, in the sake of the context of this presentation, the theme is is, is consistent here. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's always anti-U.S. How bad U.S. is? I'm not. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not disagreeing completely. I mean, I'm not. But why is it only the U.S.? That's the other question I like to ask. Why is it always o only the U.S. and not, um, you know, well, I don't want to say this country on your channel. I want I think to pick on know. smaller countries because because that would be racist. Well, yeah, I mean, and the word colonial, um, why is it only that the European nations were colonial and everyone else was not when they did the same things? Why don't we use the same label for everyone? <clears throat> Excuse me. Because uh, you can only blame, you can only blame the white people and you cannot blame the non white people. I mean, let me just bring this and just drop this across here. I mean, this was the Islamic empire. So these guys were settled here. This little dot is Mecca. That's where they were. Next thing you know, they've destroyed 10,000 Christian churches all across North Africa. They've destroyed 1,000 churches on the Turkish border with Armenia. And they are enslaving. They, they control half of Italy. They control the coastline of Italy up to 100 kilometers from the coast. They, for 700 years, they conquered Spain and they were attacking the French in the late 600s, 690s, 700s. They were kicked out of Spain, out of France in 732. They got kicked out of Spain in the 1100s. What were the Muslims doing in Spain attacking the French in the late 600s, early 700s? What did the French do to them? No, because these are warlike Muslims. And no one talks about how these are all colonial countries still under Islamic domination. Right. Thank you. Still under, under the religious theocracy of ultimately Saudi Arabia still today. Yeah. And uh, my Arab friends, my Arab Christian friends uh, really get upset with me when I, when I frame it this way. But I also want, want to point out how these European nations are predominantly Christian historically. And I feel that that has a lot to do with it. I could be wrong, but that's my perception. Again, from my lens, it's you're either with Christ or you're not. I don't, I don't have a middle ground. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all I got on that. Yeah, can, so it's al Islam, al Islam. Yeah, we're not going to. We're not really talking about aliens and UFO movies. I mean, that's a little too. Uh, yeah, it's off the topic. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to go there. Honestly, I mean, there's probably a couple I like, but I mean, uh, I'm, I mean, there's there's enough speculative nonsense on the internet, so not not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, war machine again. Why is it the U.S. military only? That's the war machine, and not any other nations. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, like Islam, isn't that a war machine? Like you just demonstrated. Yeah. So just that's yeah. it. That's all I got for this group of, of films. Now we're getting into, if, if we have time, the pro, pure pro-Islamic, pro-culture films. You yeah. know what would also be interesting is, um, was it, is it not Heartbreak Ridge? There's the one with Clint Eastwood's son. That's about this um, outpost in Afghanistan. Scott Eastwood. Uh, let me see. Uh, mm. Let me just see here. Yeah. Let me just find it. Give me a second. The Outpost. That's it. Okay, that's one. It's on my radar. It's on my list, but way down on my list. Yeah. Uh, it's actually I. I've enjoyed it a few. I've watched it a few times. I quite enjoyed it. Um, the, yeah, I think it's the Outpost with Scott Eastwood, and this was actually a really interesting film, and I think it portrays them really well. It humanizes them, so I like this one. Okay, it actually was it was a positive message. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. I've watched it like twice. I think. And it's got Clint Eastwood's son in it, so it was really good. So I might have to watch that on a Sunday. Oh, have you seen also a whole lost one? Have you seen this one? Yes. Yes, that's a good one. Good, good choice. Yeah, I've good watched choice. this like four times, and I think it's pretty good. And I think it it makes a fair distinction between those who are helpful and those who are not. I think it's mm -hmm. I think this one is fair. I really liked it. I like the scene in the middle. I mean, it shows basically how money's being used and exchange and all that. Yeah, it shows all kinds of things. It's a really good movie. Um, there's also, anyways, I don't, want, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but yeah, that's a, that's another good choice. Right. Okay. So, 
Oh, you're Should right. We... Kevin, yes, this Robin. Yeah, he's like this. He's like this sophisticated, wise Muslim guy. And you're like, huh? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly that. And this is a childhood favorite of mine. This is probably my favorite Robin Hood movie, even though it's the least popular one. And Morgan Freeman's character here is one of the reasons. Um, yeah, he's always playing the wise guy and all that. So he's being casted that way. Um, uh, same with uh, the late James Earl Jones, you know, with the voice. He's always the wise guy. Um, but, yeah, so basically, yeah, the the British are portrayed as these evil people. He comes back home and, you know, he's got the evil sheriff and all that. Well, this guy, you know, the Moor is running around. He's like, you know, he's the mentor. He's the protector. Um, his people, his women are the most the beautiful. scientist who knows how to use the um, the telescope. And then Robin Hood is too stupid to know. And he looks at it from the wrong side and everything's become every, everything becomes microscopic because he's a bumbling idiot. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and then also there's, um, there's another thing that happens here as well. Uh, with Morgan Freeman, sorry, this is one of the item as well. Um, it, oh, the demonization of British history, right, has continued. Oh. Now you have they're demonizing um, and telling a completely false history of um, Winston Churchill, and this has become a relentless series of attacks. And so it's snowballed. Then the whole thing, once you open the door, it has snowballed as well. Yeah, and so even in this movie, you know, they're, they're showing the Crusades as almost as if the British lost and they had to retreat, and you know, and they show nothing about the war. And, yeah, it's just so one-sided and, and, and misguiding. But very subtly, if you're not paying attention, or if you don't know, you completely buy into it like I did when I was young. Um, all right, we can go to the next one. Uh, yeah, so this is a classic tale. A lot of the really popular movies uh, through the decades, from the very beginning of Hollywood on, um, come from 1001 Arabian Nights. Um, and so even movies of that name were done. Basically, it's a story of uh, a, a wife who's trying to not get, mur uh, mur not get killed um by the, this muslim uh sheik or whatever he is he's got many wives he keeps uh basically he wants uh, nothing but uh virgins and so he he uh marries a, a woman and, and then he kills her the next day and then he you know, marries another one he kills her and so she comes along she's like okay well to avoid this she starts telling him a story so he won't do the um the bridal duties with her um and so every night she's got a new story for him to, to kind of kind of keep him away and he's like he's all engrossed in these stories and that's where you get the thousand one Arabian nights so all like these other nasty premise yeah but yeah uh, of course uh, hollywood made movies about it and naturally didn't portray it in that way <laughs> so um and even cartoons by the way you see you see that's uh oh boy the uh mr magoo which goes way back not only is it animation but um early animation early 20th century all right so we can go on to the next one and if, if i'm going too fast let me know but i just want to make sure because i know i think it's okay all right okay so alibaba surely you've heard of alibaba one of my childhood favorites as you can see here this is um we have animations we have grassroots movement going on we have a conditioning of youth that is pushing um, Islamic mythologies or, or culture onto children. Um, and these are, these are some of my favorite favorite films. So you even got Popeye doing it. One of my favorite um, bands, who, by the way, is Jewish. I got to put that out there. Um, you might have heard of them. Beastie Boys? Anyone? Uh -huh. Okay, so in the song, yeah, the Beastie Boys, I got a little story I got to yeah. tell about the <laughs> bank robbers, you know, so well. Yeah, Started yeah. way back uh, in history. You're going to get zapped. <laughs> yeah. um, Don't sleep till Brooklyn. No, no sleep till Brooklyn. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I grew up on that. <laughs> do you do you remember Rhythm and Stealing? Uh, I, I listened to all of it. I just probably can't remember that one. There's a few uh, that I that I like the, the lyrics. There's one part of it that goes Ali Baba in the Forty Thieves. Ali. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So yes, even, I remember. That. Yeah. So even in this, um, I don't whatever you label, whatever you want to label that that music, even there they're pushing the Ali Baba narrative. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, um, but I don't. I mean, would you really say that that would necessarily be part of a conspiracy, or, or they're being pushed into it? Or it's just that they just ran with the theme because, because you know, there's going to be some level of coincidence. You can't have one hundred percent. You know, you've got some strange Jewish guy in a basement who's manipulating literally everybody. You know, that that would be stretching well, imagination a bit. Yeah, I don't. I try not to. I try to avoid the why. I mean, unless. I only talk about that if I feel if I can't take it anymore and want to share my quote unquote opinion. But outside of that, I try to stick to the when, the what, and the who, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, K drama says I, I, I don't hate the US, but I hate US foreign policies. They love Islam and promoting Islam. I, look, I will mention I, I used to work in the Middle East, and if you didn't have the US parking their ships all over the Middle East. You'd have had Iran invading everybody. You'd have had Saudi Arabia invading their neighbors and stealing their stuffs. Seriously, the U.S. As much as you, you know, you only hear about the bad. If the U.S. weren't around playing world police, you would have a lot of bad things going on in the world that 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 you wouldn't want to happen. Um, I sat down once with the with the guys who was in guy who was in charge of the arms procurement for the UAE military. And he sat down and he said in their war games, they, they estimated that if Iran ever decided to invade the UAE, that's Dubai and Abu Dhabi, if they ever decided to invade, that they would send the jet fighters over, they would bomb the, the, the runway so that their jets couldn't take off. And then they would send their ships across. And I was involved with the system for detecting any boats moving out of the Iranian harbors. I, I built a system, I designed and built, helped to build a system for, for various militaries in that region to, to monitor all Iranian traffic especially military traffic on the water. And the estimate was, they said their best wargaming is that if the Iranians ever decided to take over the that part of the Gulf, they would do it in under 60 minutes. They said best case, if they would manage to get their planes off the ground, they managed to, you know, because the missiles would be across, destroy the runways. And if they, best case, he said two hours. And the Iranians would overwhelm that region. So if the U.S. weren't there with their little bases and with their with their navies, you would see a lot more instability and a lot more war. So as much as there's a lot of bad things, and we only hear the bad, there's a lot of good things as well. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, and so you can see even Bugs Bunny did an episode in Alibaba. Um, this is mid mid to early 20th century. I don't remember too many. Uh, movies from my time from from uh, let's say the 90s on mm -hmm. so yeah so but basically alibaba is from a thousand one nights so very popular again about thieving about stealing so um that's probably why the beastie boys included it as uh, in their song um yeah so that's pretty much all i got for all I, mean, I think they're just for having fun i mean i don't see them as any kind of hidden message trying to promote the cia's you know mk ultra or you know, mockingbird message. I, I don't. I don't get that. No. Yeah, I don't know about mockingbird or and all that, but I mean, the, yeah. I just again, I just stick with the who, the what, and the when, not, not the why. Yeah, but it's interesting how they are. They are. You you see American movies. Police are evil. Police are corrupt. Police are bad. Police are right. racists. Definitely. And then you see all of these movies, and it's like it's all romanticized, and really, it's so amazing, exactly. and it's all incredibly exotic. Exactly, and that's why I started. I started with the weak arguments of the first grouping. And then the second grouping of just the U.S. military and all the U.S. military is just bad for so many different reasons. And now we're getting into outright promoting a, a promotion of, of Islam, which is undeniable. And then, you know, again, if you're up for it, if I have a, where I'm a welcome. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of reviews, but I would love to uh, sit down and watch that, that that documentary that you gave me, The, the Real Bad Muslims, and um, just Real. Rip, rip it a new one. If, if this presentation itself hasn't done that already. Or we'll do that. Um, so yeah, Thief of Baghdad. Again, um, this is yeah, kind of uh, show the audience again. It's real bad Arabs. This yeah. one. 
Yeah, I skimmed through it, and I was like, man, I, I can't watch this. <laughs> but I'll, I'll suffer through it if for for good cause. Um, oh, he says that the genie is black in the movie posters, and now the genie is blue. You're right. Well, the, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same one. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. So again, this is this kind of the same thing as you can see, stealing, which is which is common. You know, you guys might know that um, it's okay for Muslims to steal from the kafir, but uh, good luck. Uh, the other way around or, or so on so you can see stealing as a major theme in all these things we're going to go through amongst other things um so yeah this the thief of baghdad wasn't i didn't find too many examples of that maybe the thief of damascus is influenced by that maybe not again this is a stretch this is uh, let's say just food for thought i'm not even going to say i'm i'm it's my opinion. Uh, I'm just putting it out there because it had a similar name around the sim same time. The same thing with the Wizard of Baghdad. It's got a similar story to the Thief of Baghdad and Abu kind of character, but uh, I can't really confirm whether or not it's been influenced by that. But right. at any rate, you can see different films that are semi, somewhat similar that are promoting Islam or you know its cultures and its beliefs and so on. Aladdin, certainly. Certainly everyone's here, heard of Aladdin here. If we can see how far back Aladdin goes. This is a silent film from, I think, 1917. Why did you call it Aladdin? It's Al-Adin. Al-Adin. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> of All the right. faith, of the creed, of the religion. Actually, mm. it's none of those. It's of the, the deen is a political system. So he is of the deen. The deen being Islam, Islam being the political system like communism or fascism or Nazism. This is the theocratic political system of the deen. And look at how much of, of, of the deen they, they're pushing here. I mean, all throughout. And again, grassroots movement, as we saw with the other ones. Um, you know, these are movies that were also shown on television. And up until, let's say, the 70s, um, we only had three channels everyone was watching the same thing at the same time throughout the country everyone for at least two to three full generations and then cable tv came around and a decade later satellite dish and then um this uh, internet stuff came around at the turn of the century um anyway so yeah yeah again this is about gin right it, it made Jim Poplar, just like I Dream of Genie, the uh, 60s TV series. Yeah, it's all colorful and friendly, this family friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just uh, even see in, in the film at the bottom, this, uh, this, this, they go out of their way. There's a lot of money, there's a lot of time, a lot of resources spent planning, editing, and so on. That there's, there's no accident that this character is made to look like a, a Christ figure which is, uh, you know, they go out of their way to be blasphemous. I mean, it, it, you can just see their their religion for, for that to be true. But, um, yeah, again, from early on, even even on Broadway, they had a musical, Aladdin. Um, and they, this is not even going into radio, print, and so on. So it's just all over the place. Even this is like a a 1950s uh, DuPont show. It's like the Ed Sullivan show. Even there, they're featuring Aladdin. So, I mean... Al-Adin. Uh, forgive me. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it right, maybe, one of these days. Yeah, no, but think about it. It's hidden in plain sight. It's hidden right there. It's Al-Adin. Yes. So, it's not Aladdin. It's it's Al-Adin. <laughs> we, we forget what it really means. It's of the of the faith, of the creed, of the of the deen. Hidden in plain sight. Uh, you, you're tempting me to go off on, on that conspiracy theory tangent again. But, but you know, this is the difference between stuff from the 20th century and stuff now in the 21st century. Back then, it was much more subtle. They introduced things incrementally. Uh, it was much more mm -hmm. subliminal. Now it's just belligerent. It's overt. It's a... Um, it's, uh, but in a sense, that's actually a good thing. I mean, look, they, they've achieved success... Remember what I said earlier, one of the lessons that I learned, um, long story, won't go there, but when you try to force someone to adopt an idea, mm -hmm. 
when you push fact, reason, and data, when you try to manipulate them and force them with fact, reason, and data in a manipulative manner, of course, they reject it because it's not their thought. It's an external thought that's being forced upon them and people resist it. But what you get them to imagine as their own thought, because you're not saying, hey, this is good. You show them a cool movie, beautiful colors, lovely pictures, pretty actresses, you know, boob tubes and whatnot. And it looks fun. It looks interesting. It looks friendly. It looks wholesome. You accept it and you tell yourself, this is fun. This is good. This is nice. I like this. They didn't tell you to like it. You liked it yourself. So therefore, mm -hmm. it's your thought and your mind does not resist it. It lets it in. Not, now they're blatant, though. So, Yeah. And it's interesting. It's pretty much exactly, if you think about it, getting on a theological discussion here. It's just like when Satan himself tried to tempt Jesus Christ, promising him the world. It's, it's kind of like that. They're alluring us with all this magical, majestic stuff and promise of, of good things and happy things and um, gain, self-gain to lure us in. And unfortunately, I've been a victim of it myself. I call myself a victim of mass media, one of its biggest victims, because I too have bought into it up until very recently. Even even to this day, I struggle with it, to be honest. I, you see this on the left. I'm a victim. Send me money. Amen. Yeah, speaking of sending money, uh, I've got a fundraiser coming up. Anyway, all right, next slide. All right. <laughs> I mean, unless you've got, yeah, that's it. All right. So Sinbad, um, I, I can find this is just, this is not academic, but it's kind of intriguing to me um, that in English, if you break that word up, it's uh, it's a very interesting name. Uh, I'm sure it's completely coincidence, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting coincidence, but you can see Sinbad. here. It, sorry. Yeah. It's actually Sindibad. I believe it should be Sindibad. But you're right. Why did they make it Sinbad? I believe it's Sindibud. Sindbud. Hmm. Um, yeah, good grief. Yeah, go on in there. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Go on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's basically, I mean, you can see here now like a plethora of, uh, of productions for Sinbad. Again, yet another thief. Uh, all this uh, occult stuff going on. Um, it, it was even present in comics. Uh, that's a 12 cent comic. I believe that's 1940s, 50s, 50s, probably 50s. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Popeye again, cartoons, uh, TV series dedicated to that. Both are early 20th century, mid 20th century, late 20th century, 21st century Sinbad, all across the board. Um, movies, even Lou Ferrino, um, interesting actor, interesting person, uh, played Sinbad. I mean, it's just all over the place. Again, the question remains, is are they portraying it in a positive light, a negative light? or a neutral light? Is it all about the money? I've demonstrated here that uh, on every level, whether it's uh, attacking um, US military, undermining it through propaganda, or whether it's promoting uh, Islamic occult constructs, it's, uh, it's positive for Islam. And again, it's from the very beginning of Hollywood and, and so on. We're not even getting, we're not even focusing on, on TV or radio or print or the internet, the 21st century abomination. I thought Root of Sinbad, <clears throat> while you're speaking, it's really interesting. The seventh voyage of Sinbad, the seventh, the seven adventures of Sinbad. So I don't know if there's, I mean, who knows? There, there might be some kind of, of um, symbolism there. Yeah. I think, uh, again, just a shot in the dark, but when I say that, I think I'm trying to pervert at seven. But the, the you know, three. on another on another view from another viewpoint, though, here you've got Westerners who are making polite, pleasant, um, likable representations of foreign cultures, and yet these foreign cultures turn around and do exactly the opposite. They demonize. They they attack and they undermine yes. and they call everyone racist. So, I mean, you could also look at it from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's being nice and they abused your, your generosity. They abused your, your politeness. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
I, I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but just to get touch on that BRICS thing. Um, I've worked for a certain country I can't mention on YouBoob, or so I've been told. Uh, at least I will on my channel, but I don't want to uh, compromise you. Um, but yeah, they basically, their children act the same way that we see on FA4 uh, cartoon. Um, children that uh, seem to adore me and so on and so forth. Little, little eight-year-olds um, that are really intelligent, really nice, really sweet that on their national holidays, they'll start going, kill, 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 kill everyone. You know, I'm like, what about the Europeans? Kill everyone. What about me? Kill everyone. You know, just, just like you see on FAR4, right? So, yeah, not everyone is, well, in a nutshell, again, I, I've got that black, white, either with Christ or not perspective. Not everyone is Christian, you know? It's the reality. Yeah. And I see you've got here in um, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Right, the next one. And what I find interesting is um, Lawrence of Arabia, apparently in his memoirs, or at least so the story goes, he was actually, let's just say, a nice Muslim man grabbed him, threw him over a table, held him oh, down, wow. and uh, had his way with him. And and they kind of erased that little little, they, they erased that little story because it, it wouldn't fit the narrative. And then on top of that, Lawrence of Arabia was apparently a little bit too much. He, he'd gone, you know, he'd gone dances with camels, basically. So he was a bit of a whack job in some of his ideology. Mm, that wouldn't surprise me. And again, this is a story that's also, I mean, a movie that's also controversial. There are Muslims are claiming that it's anti-Islam. Where if you look at the story, the movie at least, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> look at the movie. It's uh, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's anti-Islam. If, if it portrays Islam as this powerful entity, where, um, you know, the the British are, are kind of uh, dancing around them, are kind of scared to approach them or deal with them. Um, uh, and again, you see these other the the, the line in the desert. Uh, the wind and the lion and the the kite runner was uh, one that's in the 21st century. The, they had a lot of buzz. I think it was like around 2008 when that one came out, give or take. Um, and that was an, again the award winner. Like look at look at the Muslim boy who's befriending the non-Muslim. Um, how nice, nice, right? But we all know that's not a reality. In fact, that's uh, against. I mean, I, I, is it? Are you familiar? I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you, offhand, do you know what reliance of the travel, what Sharia law says about non-Muslims befriending Muslims? I mean, we know what uh, they do. I mean, they can be nice to you as long as they hate you in their hearts and they can pretend to be your friend. But, um, I mean, also here, look at this, this Momo here, the beam of light, the ray of light right. shining on him. I mean, this is something I've discussed often on my channel, like many times. So, except, I mean, she had the light coming from her JJ shining 1,200 kilometers from indoors, though. I don't know how that works, but okay, it does. And um, and then, of course, that is taken from the from the proto-evangelion of James, which speaks of Jesus being born in a ray of light. So, yeah. And, yeah, that's a bit, is exactly right. You know, they're just, yeah, anyway, I'm, it's just, this is blasphemous and, these, you know, Prince of Persia, um, actually great production value. Uh, when I watched it, I enjoyed it. But uh, obviously pro-Islam. All this stuff is obviously pro-Islam and misleading, if not blasphemous. We see in his last example, blasphemous. Um, yeah, yeah, although it kind of treads very lightly. Like if you look at um, what's the movie that was mentioned earlier, um, which I, I mean, I've watched this movie like six times, um, Kingdom of Heaven. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it portrays the the Templars as as corrupt, and it portrays the Muslims as pious and respectable, and you know with integrity, fighting for a valid cause, and and it, that it's like that really twists the history and the the morality there. Mm. Yeah, there's another one anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of movies that I haven't. I mean, again, this is just a sample. There's a lot of movies that I haven't included. But I was thinking if we do that other, uh, the review of the uh, documentary you mentioned, 
uh, and then again, that all, if all things go well, maybe we can also follow it up with a third and include items that we didn't include and kind of go into production things, things that are behind the scenes, right. the why. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I might have to... No yeah, worries. because um, like December is going to be very awkward for me because I've got a lot going on because especially the move is coming up and we've got to finish the place. And um, so and I also want to start doing some of my own streams, go back to material that I mm -hmm. need to do of my by myself, some of my own stuff. And uh, but yeah, look, I mean, I'll try and schedule around that as well because no yeah, definitely make time. Yeah. So. All right. So yeah, the next one, America. So Tyson became a Muslim. Yeah, uh, at least the public thing. I don't know if that's a, a ploy. I don't, you know, like this whole Andrew Tate kind of thing, or what's the other one? Uh, um, uh, Cheeto, what's what's his name? The one everyone talks about, the young guy, the gamer. I mean, Johnny Bravo. Chico. Just also, he says I'm steering the listeners. I mean, look, I'm pretty blatant. I'm, I've been very upfront at all times with my perspectives and my views, right? And I think adults can make up their own mind and they can walk away if they don't like what my view is. I mean, that's. That that is that is their choice. So did I did I make you rate the FBI with a two? I think it's blatantly obvious they're corrupt, they're biased, they are partisan, they are they're just a tool of the Democrat Party. That uh, I don't think we need to we need to guess that they are corrupt. I mean the incompetence they've showed. Do you do you know anything about the? the first assassin that tried to take out Donald Trump. Have you heard anything? When, 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 um, who was the guy that tried to take out Ronald Reagan? This was pre-internet. Within 48 hours, they had the last intimate details of this guy's life splashed all over the, all over the web. I mean, all over the newspapers, all over TV. We still know nothing about the guy that tried to take out Trump, who he was connected to, how he got in the roof, how no one saw him. I mean, the, the, the chain of failure of complete and utter incompetence, it defies imagination. It gets to the point where this was deliberate, where they allowed it to happen, where if they didn't make it happen, they certainly knew the looked the other way while they knew it was happening. So yeah, we all know the FBI, the, 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 that's the Secret Service, sorry, we should distinguish the Secret Service, but the FBI, what have they done? What have they come up with? Where's the facts? What's the information? What do we know nothing? What about the other guy who was tied? They're both tied in with BlackRock, apparently. They both have certain connections to. Um, I mean, the guy was shooting at at the range that had um, all these FBI in attendance and C and Secret Service personnel. Secret Service are said to be the world's best snipers, bar none. Better than better than Delta, better than SEAL teams. They are the best snipers on the planet by all accounts, right? So, um, yeah, who trained him? How do you get these? There's all these questions. There's too many questions. I don't think I influenced anyone. I just said, look, this is my view. I think it's they're corrupt. And I I think we know the US government, there's corruption in the US government. This doesn't mean government is bad. It means that that government needs a bit of a cleanup. Right? So, you know, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. So someone in chat said Sneeko. Yeah, that's the guy. So I don't, again, Tyson, I don't know if he's a genuinely Muslim or what's going on. I mean, he seems to be all over the place. One day he's Muslim, the other next day he's, I don't know, Buddhist. The next day he's praying to broccoli. Who knows? He's hand up his ass, man. What is nobody Islam? <laughs> um, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, very popular figure, um, ended up somewhat like a vest, speaking of broccoli, look like a vegetable in the end of after all the fights for one hour. Are they Muslims or are they Nation of Islam? Because Nation of Islam. When I was when I was the bodyguard, and yes, I was the bodyguard to Blade at one time. When I when I was doing close protection work for Wesley Snipes, um, I can tell it now. It's, it's like many years later. He had he was a Muslim, ostensibly he was a Buddhist as well. So I don't know. You figure that out, but he was. He was adherent of the Nation of Islam, which, which when you look, if there's these two short videos on my channel. Have a look for, look at them. That's two short, three to five minute videos on my on my channel about the Nation of Islam. Those ideas are insane. So, of course, they don't talk about this, but I can tell you that having spoken with people in the Nation of Islam, they hate white people. And if you're not white, well, if you're white, they hate you. Let's be honest. They're told not to fraternize with you. They're told not to share anything with you. They're told not to become friends with you. And the, the ideology is inherently anti-white. And um, besides that, they think you're evil. They, they think you're satanic. You're, you're, you're the devil. Um, when they say the, the white devils, they mean it. 
they mean white demons, evil demons. That's that's part of the ideology, and they they are racist. That's and they have a council of elders. I I, I know who some of these elders are. I've met them, but but I, I know people who are adherents, and they have a council of elders that that control the or try to at least the black society and black community. And it's it's they are not healthy people. Uh, sorry, yeah. back over to you. Any comments or thoughts that you want to throw in there to what I've said? Yeah, no, um, there's a, a little clip of one of these things that I've found on YouTube of a, of a woman with a nation of uh, Islam. She was driving by, I think it was during a BLM riot. Some people were protecting, I think it was like, I don't know, a pawn store or something. They were, they were all black. She was black too. She's driving by. She's like shouting at him, all kinds of weird, absurd, hilarious, insane things, uh, all racist um yeah anyways uh, i'll have to ch find that and share it if i can but yeah i agree with you there's just it's just i, I don't know asinine i don't know i'm trying not to use too many adjectives but <laughs> yeah um yeah and again let's see who else we got malcolm x this in my mind this was a dichotomy um between mlk jr and malcolm x I always favored MLK Jr., of course, as a Christian, but just recently I've found out some things. About Once him. you study MLK Jr., you're going to like him about as much as I like Martin Luther. It's, it's funny you said that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> if I brought that up, what, what, what you might say. <laughs> you study the life of MLK and you go like, this guy should be put in a cannon and shot into space while being eaten by fire ants because he deserved it. You know, I got to say, uh, Lloyd, you know, on, on the back of that, like, I, this is just a, just literally just recent discovery of mine. I, I had no idea. And, yeah, like I said, for years, uh, I had him, at, I know this sounds silly, but I had him, you know, in my heart, like some kind of hero, like some kind of Christian hero that did the right thing in the right way, kind of like Gandhi, right? Like the example you used earlier, yeah. everyone has to be a Gandhi, just, you know, lay, lay, lay over for the bad guys. Right? But, um, yeah, I mean, now that I found out these things about the guy, Martin Luther King Jr. I'm talking about, um, it's like, I mean, who's left? And then the same people were talking about the, what they're calling the black church, which in my mind, again, uh, now that now that I've interacted with these people, I realized that, yeah, my, my perspective of what they're calling the black church was for media. I always saw, you know, the black church or the, its members as very devout, very spiritual, you know, passionate people. And they're portraying them differently. Again, these people are black, by the way. They're not. So they're allowed to be honest about their own people <laughs> um, by today's standards. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just when, when you start going down this this thing, well, you know what? This group is that way. This person is that way. And you tear away all these heroes. I almost want to go back to ignorance and believing a falsehood because now who do I have? Who's left for me to look up to? Yeah, when I'll do I'll do Martin Luther King at some point in the future, um, but the the truth coming out about, and also the FBI has refused to release his records for what, sixty eight years or something, forty eight years, whatever it is. That's a long time, and at some point soon those records will come out, and when they release the records of Martin Luther King, I think we're going to discover just what a criminal, communist, criminal. Yeah. I mean, sex maniac, violent communist criminal the man was. You're killing me, bro. We got to change the subject. Seriously. I'm like, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from that. I say very blunt things, but look, I say them because I've done a lot of reading on this. No, it's not that. It's just, them. no, literally, it's heartbreaking. Look, I, I'm, I'm now going on three months from a break on a series that I, I was doing in Eddie Murphy. Again, that sounds silly because I am an adult and all these things that I know. But, you know, it's just, I mean, going. I'm realizing this stuff is goes ways back. I was making excuses up until recently, Freddie Murphy, like, okay, you know what? He was being peer pressure to take his current stance on his reboots and all that. But I mean, yeah, long story short, you know, I think, I think if we're going to be adults and I'm thinking aloud here, but since we're talking about this, if we're going to be adults, we've got to just get over these worldly um, idolizations uh, and, just center on Christ, you know, and I'm not being cheesy, but Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's all we're, what we're left with, right? Yeah, no, they know. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is just basically international, uh, slew of films. 
um, just a small sampling. Um, the Messenger is one that I want to do a review on uh, in itself. But, yeah, I mean, the Conquest, 1453. This is a very short list. You can see... Um, is that when the Muslims invaded um, uh, Vienna, right. the, the first, first conquest of Vienna? Bilal, a new breed hero. I mean, yeah, the uh, I did one on... Um, I forgot what it's called, but anyways, the grassroots movement is in also international. All these things we talk about. I mean, if it's happening that heavily in the U.S., just imagine what's happened. What's what kind of propaganda is out there? Um, all positive, by the way, as you can see. Obviously positive. Yeah, I think I think this is the last slide, right? Yeah, uh, this one I think is the last slide. Yeah, so this one's basically about censorship. It's my call to arms to duty, so to speak. I want everyone to band together, especially content creators, but everyone who's being censored, silenced. Um, please, you know, class action suit is uh, there's uh, there's people out there that are doing that. Uh, let's not wait for everyone else to kind of make a change. Ron DeSantis allegedly and all these things. Uh, we've got to get active and push back or we're doomed. I mean, look what's going on in the UK right now, for example, as one example of many. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Again, the question stands. I mean, there, there, there's claims that Hollywood media uh, is uh, prejudiced towards Islam, is slandering Islam. Um, but I've demonstrated here the exact opposite is the true. And I challenge anyone um, to prove me wrong. I just saw one. I'm... Uh... I just want to say, um, Francisco, I appreciate the, the questions and the interest, but also the chat when you're doing your education on Islam, is, which is not related to the topic, is very much a distraction. It would be nice if you would, outside of, you know, when you're busy chatting about movies in Islam and you're busy trying to educate yourself on Islamic doctrine and ISIS and things, that's not really on the topic. So take the time outside of this to actually go watch many. I've got 600 videos on my channel, lots of series that, that go step by step. Try to try to educate yourself then and then come to the chat with some knowledge because it's I, I find it a real distraction. Ah, 1453 was the conquest of Constantinople. Right. So, so yeah, I didn't say you should leave. But I did say you should just understand that we're talking about topic A and you're on topic Q. And you've got time outside to uh, to do some research. <clears throat> Thank you, Lydia. Um, yeah, so that's basically all, all I have for you guys. I mean, I could go on about their censorship. I, you know, shame on me. I wanted to do a video before chat GPT um, on, I was going to title it, is uh, AI replacing God? Um, basically, and then I just gathering all this information is proof for it. I just got overwhelmed. The next thing you know, Chat GPT came out and it got popularized. And at that point, I was like, all right, you know, what's the point? Everyone is already aware of what's going on. At least I hope. But yeah, I mean, we need we need to push back. We're still it's still a free country. It's interesting that I, I just recently watched a um, a video. I think it was Hatun Tosh. Yeah. She did a live, I think it was yesterday. Um, I, can't, I don't know who the gentleman was, but they were talking about how she just wanted just a second wrongful arrest uh, in the UK. And the, the gentleman kept pointing out that the law is still actually on your side, even in the UK. If you won the case, that means the law is still on your side. Even though you've got you know, police corruption and so you know um, bad leadership and so on, you can still push back. There's still something you can do. And I encourage everyone to do that to their best, to, with all their being. Um, I don't want to get into my opinions of what's going to happen and all that. Uh, that's not what your channel is about. Um, but we certainly are not called to sit on our hands and wait for God or others to do our work for us. Uh, yeah, I don't like the passive idea because... When people say, you know, in the end, we know who wins. Jesus wins. God wins. And like, are we supposed to do nothing until then? Are we supposed to just let evil run rampant? You know, I, I have a concern with that sometimes, that people are just too passive. 
and believe we've got to be cowards and not masculine. And, and that this is our enemies defining Christianity and making us into passive, if not necessarily participants with evil, but certainly aiding and abetting it by standing aside and letting it do its thing. Right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different people that, that put that in a very good way. But exactly. I mean, we're not, we're not supposed to be Gandhis. You know, the common example media actually uses is the whole Nazi thing. The people who said nothing while the Nazis did their thing. I mean, isn't that the same thing? Like uh, all these things that are going on, if you're if you're choosing to not say anything or do anything, you're just as guilty. And if I may go on a tangent, a little off topic, but it's related to what we're saying now. Um, this whole grooming thing, which is kind of it is related. I mean, it's, it's Islam is saturated with that. Um, look, people, please, for the love of God. Hold people accountable, everyone accountable. There needs to be arrests. And if arrests aren't being made, they need to hold those people that are not doing the arrest accountable as well. Do not let this be the new norm. For the love of God. Not the children too. Huh? Yeah. yeah, look, all we can do as, as people who don't run the government and don't have a billion dollars is to talk about these things, to publicly discuss it. Uh, we don't have to jeopardize our, our jobs, granted, but but we need to talk about this with our own circle and maybe set up an anonymous, open an anonymous email account, open up a Twitter account and talk about things, discuss things because, can, because people need to know they're not alone. So you need to let other people know. And the more you speak about it, the more you'll encourage others to speak about it. And um, people need to see also people who are courageous. Courageous is as, is as infectious as is cowardice. So, and also, what is interesting about the movies that you were showing, Nico, is that you see you see these foreign cultures in a good light, in many cases, but you see Western culture, American culture, in a bad light. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice mm -hmm. to start seeing more movies where Western culture is in a good light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that same mindset. I find it interesting that, again, going off another tangent, but related to what you just said, I find it interesting that when it comes to, and it was something you mentioned earlier, when it comes to U.S. corporations, uh, in the late 20th century, they were basically vilified. They're, you know, they're the worst entities on the planet. I'm not, I mean, uh, I've, I've learned, uh, I've, I'm all but pen book certified. Like, I, I've learned about best practices. Uh, I'll just, let, you know, leave it at that. But yeah. I'm not completely disagreeing with that sentiment. But isn't it interesting that U.S., Corporations and only U.S. corporations are the evil ones. Well, meanwhile, all these other things, without naming countries and what they're doing, are doing the same things, if not worse. And you know, as you said, they're they're the wonderful ones. Now, all of a sudden, yeah. Well, I mean, practical examples: nine out of ten, ninety-five out of a hundred of the most polluted rivers in the world are in Asia or Africa. You don't see anyone going. You Africans are disgustingly dirty people who throw all of your crap in the river. You people are horrible. How dare you? Your cause, you don't see that. You don't see that. But you go like, oh, you white people, you guys are bad because you polluted that river. Look, I found a duck that had eaten a Coke bottle top, right? And that's like five rivers out of the whole of North America. And then like you'll see a thousand rivers across China, India, Africa, just glutted with, with 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 garbage and it's like that's okay we, we we can't criticize brown people and you you look at the amount of pollution caused by china britain puts out like one percent of the pollution that china does you don't see greta thunberg demonstrating in front of the chinese embassy or the indian embassy or the pakistani embassy going you people are disgusting for what you're doing by destroying the planet i mean china puts out between china and india that's what 90 percent of the pollution that's entering the atmosphere whatever you don't you don't see anyone protesting that because it's okay when brown people do it it's hypocrisy it's complete and utter hypocrisy you should stop being guilted this whole white guilt thing needs to stop sorry your thoughts your final thoughts on that i guess um yeah so my final thoughts on that yeah i completely agree again this whole word i mean it's uh we're, was commonly known as double speak we're, talk, we're looking at eric blair's uh, 1984 uh, George Orwell's 1984, um, or dialectics, some people call it that. 
it's a it's a huge huge thing when it comes to controlling people's minds controlling culture um, controlling outcomes and again you you use the word i don't want to get off on tangents but as an example and bear with me folks uh, don't throw don't throw the stones at me quickly but just hear me out just for a second when it comes to the label Asia, who are we referring to? Are we not referring to the same people that we used to refer to as Orientals? Or, or am I wrong? Am I mistaken about that? Mm, yeah, I think so. Okay, so... So, if, right. so if it's the same people, how does that... How does changing the label change anything? Um, it's like when you say... When you look at a guy with a beard and chest and you go, that's a woman, it, it changes things. Look, it's it's purely nominalism. It believes that slapping a new label on something changes the content, utterly changes the reality. It's nominalism. It's the same philosophy that Martin Luther followed. It's the same demented philosophy that doesn't believe in categories, doesn't believe in, in objective truth. It's, it's purely that we simply use labels as conveniences and there are no objective categories. There's no such thing as man, woman, dog, cat, red, white. There's purely just what we, what opinions we have about what things are. So it's, it's the philosophy that, that is ruling the world today and it's the philosophy of the woke. Woke is nominalism. It's, it's, I've got plenty of videos on my channel on that. Go look it up. It's on atheism, nominalism, and philosophy. Have a look. So that's that's what it is. Changing the label doesn't change anything. Well, it's Gnosticism. Uh, let me add to that. Actually, I think in this case, it's both. It it is that, but it's also something else. I think subliminally, what happens. And again, please bear with me here. Just some food. And again, I, I'm I'm not saying this is definitively the fact. It's just an idea that maybe this is possibly true. Possibly, a label like that is being used where now the only people that exist are the people that are called the Pearl of Asia. Um, you know, why, yeah, completely excluding Indians or even Arabs or Russians or the Silk Road folk. Um, you know, all, it's only the Asians that exist. You see what I'm saying? Like by, by one label, We've now subconsciously, virtually. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> yeah, the nation of Islam believes that um, that the only nation, the black people, are actually Asians. Okay, <laughs> they're part of the Asiatic race. That's what they call it. So that maybe there's an overlap there. I don't know. I can't. I was just just that when you mentioned the the whole term, because that that's the original people, the black people. Okay, so it's so two million years ago, two million years ago. I don't know what it's twenty million years ago. I'll get the story wrong. The two videos are on my channel. They, in total, they're like six minutes to watch both or whatever, five minutes, seven minutes. But the, the black people were the original race and there were 24 gods called Allah. And each of these Allahs took a turn, like a one year period where they would act as Allah and then they would hand over to the next guy and they would do it this, you know, they would just hand over who does the Allah duties for whatever period. And the black people were the original race. They were pure. They were, they were intelligent, long lived. And then Yakub, a, a guy known as the big head scientist because he had a massive head, he decided to rebel. He was one of the Allahs and he rebelled and he went away um, to Crete, I believe, to the island of Crete. I'm looking at you Greek people. And right. then what happened is um, he invented white people. So for 200 years, he did genetics and eugenics. And eventually, after experimenting with sperm and all sorts of weirdness, he created white people, the white race. And then the white race was given control of the earth for 6,000 years. And this is not even talking about the spaceship, okay? We're not even going to go there. But oh, no. anywho, the white people has control of the earth for 6,000 years. But the white rule ended in 1914. But they were given a grace period of another 80 years or something or 90 years. I don't know what it was. And and that, that period has now ended in 1986, whatever. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. something like that. Check the video for the facts, for the details. And so white people have actually now supposed to hand the earth back to the pure, intelligent, original black people, the Asiatic race, because Asians and Indians are the same thing. So yeah, anyway, that, that's just some of the, the, the story that is believed by the 
by guys like Malcolm X because he bought into this crap. Mm. So yeah, anyway, but so you know, I'd like to it's just about over two hours. Yep. I like to sort of wrap it up around now. So <laughs> but that's yeah, the story. Yeah. yeah. Could I uh show it didn't yeah, I'm a little unprepared. I uh please go ahead, yeah. Thank you. Um again, if, if you decide to visit my channel or you know that do that stuff, I'm gonna warn you. Um I'm, I'm obnoxious on it. Um I do that by design. I've been encouraged to, to reconsider that. Maybe I should, I don't know, but at any rate, I'm, I'm trying to target a certain audience by using a certain language. So I'm catch gonna... more flies with honey than you do yeah. with vinegar. For real. I mean, hey, I it's, I'm guilty of not exactly being sweet and polite myself, but, uh, you know. Yeah. I know. I'll, 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 uh, I'll pray about it as, as we say, you know, literally pray about that. But at any rate, um, personally, uh, if I may, you know, again, I forgive me for sounding like this, but. Um, Going to the third winter, each winter is getting worse. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really uh, destitute. So, um, what I, I'm asking for is not a handout, but a boost. I'm going to do a Kickstarter, so I can uh, finally get these uh, works of fiction published. I need help doing that. Um, so, look for that in the future. I haven't got set up and got the banking thing going on. So I need to get that set up before I can share that yeah. link. But, I just uh, want to mention something. Sorry, there's this guy that, um, you know, this is the usual Muslim thing. You know, Lloyd, um, the last time that Sheikh, that, that Sheikh Shiton Shu came to America, over 500 people became Muslim because of him. And on Digital Mimbar's channel, a Greek, Nicodemus' own people, Orthodox priest accepted Islam. Uh, dude. We, we've heard every version of this story, okay, about how Sheikh, <laughs> about how Sheikh um, Fitzpatrick, you know, whatever, converted to Islam. And then whenever he got, dude, we, we've heard this story. It's, it's propaganda. It's laughably funny. Although what I do strongly suggest that you do is to watch these videos by ex like this one by ex Muslims of America. It's, it's fantastic. The tsunami of apostasy of the amount of Muslims leaving Islam, because these are very famous, very well known, very powerful sheikhs talking about how 30%, 25%, was 15%, now it's 20%, now it's 30% of Muslim youth have all left Islam and are not coming back, and how we are losing Muslims in droves, and there's an apostasy, you know, tsunami, you know. A tidal wave of apostasy. So yeah, this is by 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 these same scholars. So Sheikh Uthman, that's all funny and well, but uh, but then you see more famous Muslims than him telling us there's a massive apostasy. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, no, that's uh, I've got a someone who how can I put this in layman's forgive forgive my English here, people. Uh, it looks like I have someone who's got a hard on for me, which is common in Islam given uh, the guy who worships. Um, yeah, I've got, uh, you know, inspired by Mahmoud here. Um, I've got another video coming up, speaking of which. Uh, it's called The Night of the Jinn, where Kutham, uh, a.k.a. Mahmoud, gets ridden all night by hundreds and hundreds of naked jinn uh, because he wants to stand outside of his own circle, I guess because he likes it that way. So look for that. It's a short. Um, I'm sure, especially you, Mahmoud, would love it. Um, yeah, and the more you provoke me, the more videos I'll, I'll put up in your honor. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, as you know, Satan became a Muslim as well because it fitted right in there with uh, with his uh, philosophy, ideas, and preferences, right? So, that's why we know that Satan is a Muslim because Islam is exactly what demons need to be following. And then, of course, if you think about it, Epstein Island. I mean, maybe he was a Muslim too, right. because Islam does allow the kind of diddling that he was into. So yeah. So anyway, so guys, thank you. I guess. Sorry. Uh, Nico. Yeah. No, that's what I was. Yeah, that's why I started this presentation with basically the parallels. I mean, it, it boils down to this: you're either with Christ or not. If you're not with Christ, then you engage in these behaviors, and that includes the fallen Christian. The Christians that deviate from Christianity are the ones that guilty of. Of doing these things, by the way, which is the exact opposite of cults like Islam, yeah. which promote it and enforce it. Yeah, and Muhammad did say says that Islam will slink like a snake between the two mosques and sink back into its hole. So, buddy, 
run into your hole. Off you go. So Sahih Muslim, um, what is it? 416? It's 416? Yeah, whatever it is. I mean, it's <laughs> Daif Bukhari for all I know. But guys, right. thank you. Let's call it a night and we'll we'll convene this another time. We'll have another talk in the future. So guys, thanks for joining us. It's been fascinating. It's been interesting. And yeah, think about what you're consuming in terms of media and the consequences of, of media. And I will be on tomorrow night with with Steve Mushney or Hussein Mushney. Nice. I'll be on tomorrow night with him just taking it easy. And uh, I haven't confirmed for Sunday. I should be on with Thunderous One. We'll, he and I will do that. And um, I will be at the shooting range on Sunday. They're doing some training with somebody. So we'll see. You know, I might, might run by two knows. So, guys, thank you very much. Um, I'll, sorry. Be, I'll be learning to shoot and learning to uh, to put holes in things. And um, so should you. You never know. Might be useful in the future. Lloyd, if, if I may, sorry. I, I just want to plug that the shilling moment. Just uh, just one more minute so I can do that. Um, because it's his projects that are, I'm obviously a passionate person, as you can see. Uh, and these projects are things that, again, the first one, um, this first children's book that I wrote, that's been completed for years, but I can't afford a professional editing for it, over 100 pages long. Um, you know, it's about single parents' uh, broken homes, which is, uh, and it's both written for both the parents and children. It's a great book, so I need help getting that published. The book that I've just started um, putting together, inspired by one of my students, is a, on grooming. He said, why don't you do one on grooming? And I've come up with an idea, which is a brilliant. I can't, I can't, it's not copyrighted yet, so I can't share what that's about. But it's probably going to be my best work. Um, but again, I need I need help doing this. So please, uh, if you can, look look for my Kickstarter coming either on my channel or somewhere, whatever, in the very near future, so I can get these, these kinds of projects out there. Um, I think, um, yeah, you'll be doing me a big service, hopefully, I could uh good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, guys. You for, thank you again for having me, uh, Lloyd. God bless you. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. God bless.